Mason, as you know, if October is the scariest month of the year, November is the most magical. In what sense? Uh, there's a loot crate and it's about magic. Woo! Magic! <laughs> yeah. Uh, so if you sign up to lootcrate.com slash weeklyplanet and use the promo code weeklyplanet, that's one word, you get three, $3 off any loot crate box. But November's theme one is magical to tie into Fantastic Beasts. Where are they? Have you seen them? Help me. Where, where, where they're, in, they they're in the case. They're still in the case? They're in the case. Just op- don't open the case okay. and you'll be fine. <laughs> Save yourself a lot of trouble. Just lock the case. Get one of those Get one of those springy clips. Yep, absolutely. It's a springy one. Oki strap. They're hard to get now because I think- Because they're illegal because they'll take your eye Hit out. you in the eye. <laughs> yeah. But find one. Ask your uncle. Ask your my dad's, dad's mate. Got a, my dad's got a budge. Yeah, yeah. Just, just wrap it up in the case and then the case won't open you'll be fine all the beasts will be in the case I'm sorry continue no no that's good it's good It's good advice uh, also Doctor Strange maybe in this loot crate there'll be some Oki straps <laughs> you open it be careful it in the eye uh, Doctor Strange great yep mm-hmm. Big Trouble in Little Tri- China China. or maybe there'll be an Eye of Agamotto that's not it that's not from Big Trouble Mason you're getting your, no, that's your true. properties confused also you don't want to Mess with time. You don't want to give everybody the Eye of Agamotto? No. It's going to... What a shit show, mate. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Everybody reverse in time. <laughs> uh, and Game of Thrones. Oh. So those are all fantastic things, Mason. Where are they? You can find them. They're, they're in the case. They are in the Specifically, ca- <laughs> they're in the loot crate. That's right. So it's lootcrate.com slash weeklyplanet, promo code weeklyplanet, one word, for $3 off any box. On with the show, Mason. Abracadabra. Yeah. That's a, that's a thing, isn't it? That's what, that's what <laughs> they say. Yeah. Red Hot Comic Book Movie News Shooting up your butthole The Weekly Planet, The Weekly Planet Welcome back everybody to another episode of The Weekly Planet Official podcast of comicbookmovie.com Where we talk movies, comics, TV shows My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday With me as always is my co-host Nick Mason. Finger guns. Yeah, man. Sony finger you're guns. F- finger gunning because Leonard, Cl- Leonard Cohen is dead? Is that what you're doing? No. I know it's not comic book related, but it's sort of <laughs> should be acknowledged. He no, we could, a... we've got to find some very tenuous link. Uh, uh, the song Hallelujah covers in Shrek. Shrek. There we go. That's I was going to go with Shrek as well. And Shrek probably has a comic book you find in a cereal box. Yep. There might be There might be like an Archie sure. Shrek. <laughs> probably not, though. Yeah. Look, he was a pretty good bloke. Yep. <laughs> And he, apparently he wrote, he was writing right up to the moment of his, of his death, but he was happy with the the music that he was produced. Was he writing a comic book? Perhaps. His last There's work no is way yet of to knowing, be released. Is there? Yeah. Mm. Do you prefer the Jeff Buckley or the uh, Leonard Cohen version of Hallelujah? Jeff Buckley. Yeah, me too. But. Well, f- <laughs> look, hopefully Jeff Buckley can die again and then we can talk about him on the podcast. But until then, <laughs> yeah, it's right out. It's all it. about Leonard Cohen. So here's the thing. This, this is why I didn't want to dip into this because I'm largely ignorant of Leonard Cohen. Yeah, me too. I like, yeah. <laughs> I like some of his work. Yeah. But otherwise, I don't, I don't know. Nothing. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, uh, there was another actor. Uh, sorry. D- there was an actor who died this week who had a huge impact in comic book movies. Uh, Robert Vaughn died at the age of 83. Did he? Oh. Yeah. Uh, he, he was wa- in Bullet. He was in Bullet. He was one of the men from Uncle. He was. He was the uh, whoever Henry Cavill played. He was in the Magnificent Seven. Yep, that's he right. He was in Battle Beyond the Stars, which is a weird '80s Star Wars remake of yep. Magnificent Seven. But he was also the the villain with the weather changing machine in Superman Three. That's right, he was. He was yeah, the, it was Superman Three's Lex Luthor, whose name I can't remember. That movie is god awful. <laughs> but I really like Robert Vaughn, and that bloody sucks that he's dead, mate. Yeah. '83, so uh, yeah. Mm. Two pretty big, uh, two pretty big uh, hits mm-hmm. this week, Mason. Yeah. And that's all the bad news I have. You say that, <laughs> and then sometimes you sneak in some more bad news. We'll see. Okay, Tom Holland says that he's got three Spider-Man films contracted, but he also said and three. I thought, he was, I thought you were going to say he's got three Spider-Man films in his backpack. <laughs> that he's spruiking at a market. That's at right, a, yeah. in the legal mm. DVD market. No, he said. He, t- he opened about how many fil- opened up about how many films he's signed on to. Three Spider-Man films, he says, and these mm-hmm. are his words, and three solo films. Does I that? Think, I think it's confused. There. Yeah. Does he? Me- do you think he means three solo movies, three Spider-Man films, and three Marvel movies? I think that's probably that they'll what kind he of means. wedge him in, like an Avengers. He and seems like a y- lovely young man who occasionally panics. Yeah, sure. Because this is something I learned recently in uh, Captain America: Civil War. Yeah. He's having the conversation with. Robert Downey Jr. in his bedroom. Yeah. And Robert Downey Jr., uh, Tony Stark in the film says, all right, move the leg, I'm going to sit here. Yeah. Apparently, that's not in the script. It's just Tom Holland was sitting where Tony Stark was supposed to be sitting. And so he was just like, for blocking purposes, I have to sit there, so move the leg. And he was like, oh, okay. So that's, there's a fun that's fact about that good. film. That's very good, I like so that I think that's, I think that's just him being a young man. How old is he? I think he's 20. 
20, 21 maybe. Yeah. That's young enough to say it's dumb like, things. Yeah, I would say I said a bunch <laughs> of dumb things then. Yeah, and I still do. Mm-hmm. It kind of never leaves you in a way, does it? No, <laughs> yeah. if anything, it gets worse. Are you excited to see more Tom Holland though as Spider-Man? Yes. Yeah, I thought he, he seems great. fun. Yeah, he does seem fun. Affable. And he actually looks like a teenager, even though he's not like a... You know, he's not 16, but he passes for it. Tobey mm. Maguire never passed for 16. No, he was always 35. Yeah, that's right. And he still is. <laughs> Do you think we're going to get the evolution from mechanical web shooters to organic web shooters? No, I think it will always be mechanical. So why do you think he was scratching his hair, his wrist? At no, the... because he had the little projectory thing Nobody in there. Nobody was scratching. I thought it was because Tony Stark... Because Stark's... of a projection? No, because Tony Stark installed the thing. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> a little scratchy That was not in his diode. web shooter. Wasn't it? So the projection came out of his his wrist. No, that's what I'm saying. I I assumed that it, I I assumed they were two separate incidents. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I assumed that he's in the in the web shooter. He's got that holographic computer projection thingy. Yeah, yeah. But also he's scratching his wrist because he's like, oh, I'm evolving in ways that I didn't think of before. Nah, I think we're past that. I don't okay. think that's a thing anymore. All right, cool. Yeah, but well, that's maybe. Good, yeah. yeah, maybe he's just itching because they're he's they're stuck on his wrist he's and he can't his get them off. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But no, he, it, it was, it was also confirmation that Michael Keaton is going to be the vulture. Like right. we, we, we knew that mostly. And, uh, is that from Tom Holland giving it away? <laughs> no. <laughs> Opened up his backpack and had yeah, DVD copies. No, he, uh, that Kevin Feige just said it. He's nice. like, yeah, I'm presuming he was just like, yeah, everybody knows. Yeah, he is. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Great. Good. I can't Everybody wa- knows specifically. Everybody just said, Michael, how about Michael Keaton be the vulture? And we didn't have any more ideas. <laughs> and he was walking past the office. <laughs> If we're honest, he was doing some art film. I don't know. So we, just yeah, he, he was in some kind of bird costume. So signed him on. Film somebody fine. else. Yeah, that's great. Good on him, mate. Mm-hmm. I'm excited to see a mentor of Peter Peter Parker, who he doesn't realize is actually his greatest foe, and then they both discover each other's identity and finally, fight. yeah. I hope it's not that. I'm sure it won't be, right? Uh, I think it might be though. Why can't he just be fighting a villain who he doesn't know personally? That would be good. Yeah, but I don't. I. Because everything's got to be wrapped up in a neat little bow. But I don't think that you need to... Because in the comics, I know you don't know need to. Yeah. But he's also going to fight like the Shocker and some other... And the Tinkerer, I want to say. Okay. Like a bunch of other minor villains. But uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the Shocker. Me too. Yeah, that'd be Do you cool. think he'd be all padded? Yes, we've seen a picture, Mason. Do you think he'd be more padded than in the picture? No, though? I think that's that's probably as padded as it will get. Do you think he'd be yellow padded? No, it's kind of like a dull kind of custom. There should be color. some yellow. Yeah, there is. There yeah. is. But the same way that Batrock the, the Leaper, Leaper was, had, had like some purple. Some purple. It's yeah, like okay. that kind of All right. situation. Look, if with any luck, he can get some battle damage and some of the armor comes off and he's just wearing a big yellow quilt right, cool. under his art armor. Suits me, Mason. But you know what suits a lot of people? Suits. The TV show or just the, the, the clothing? The outerwear, the business wear suits. I don't mind a suit because I don't have to wear a suit. I don't mind exactly putting Exactly, same here. I yeah. love wearing a suit, but if I had to wear one for work, yeah, I wouldn't like it anymore. Exactly. I also, I hate putting on a suit when I'm going to a thing that I don't want to go to. I have to be like so, wrestled into it like a baby. So literally... <laughs> Do you often have to wrestle babies? If you got to, if, look, if you got a, kid, oh, you mean like a rig, not like an actual fight? <laughs> no, you know, you got to get your your kids got to go to church maybe or something. So you you, you wrestle him into his little his best pants probably. Uh huh. <laughs> sure. You've never wrestled a baby into some clothes, Mason? No. What kind of father are you? Not one. Oh, is that okay? Well, that actually makes a lot of sense. I don't, I don't know about <laughs> what are we talking about? I've lost my train of thought. Young completely. Justice. That's what I was talking no, about. No, before that. Suits. Suits. That's not what we were talking about. That's what you were talking about. Oh, that's right. So I love a suit. Okay, we're back on track. I love a suit. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. Something about a baby. What are we talking about before the baby bit? Uh, I said, do you know what suits a lot of people? Suits. Yeah, and Young Justice is getting another season coming to Netflix. Oh, that's right. Season three. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen any of this. Mm-hmm. I've been meaning to watch it because I, I, a lot of people a lot of people told you on Twitter to watch Young Justice. I've watched some Young, Young Justice. And? It's good. Cool. Yeah. Well, then you'll be even more excited. Great. Uh, because, yeah, they, they bring, it's, it's odd that, you know, this is the one they chose. I guess Netflix apparently does their algorithms and they have reasons for picking particular things. Oh, yeah, So that's all true. the stats must have added up for this. Like, they had a good enough fan base and they could... They, apparently they're going to chuck on the the previous two seasons as well, Great. which is good because that's how I'll, I'll want to watch them. You know, just kind of yeah, yeah. Shotgun them is all. it going to be the same production company? Is it going to have a wild I believe new look? so. No, I believe it's it's going to be it's going to adhere to the original style. Great. I believe. Yeah, I'm not sure if, uh, creatively what no, if it's the same team or who's available and whatnot. But mm-hmm. by all accounts, everybody's very excited because it was pretty good. Uh, from what you saw of it, is this something you'd like to see in live action? Oh no, why not? Oh, I'd like to see Superboy, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I would as well, but I think 
not in TV land. Maybe no, I mean movie. like as a movie, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, mm. but I don't think. Yeah, you know what? Give him the give him the the BBS that kind that look. Yeah, but I think if you take the characters that we have in Young Justice and you put them directly into a TV universe, they're going to look ridiculous. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I I really like. Have you been reading the the current Superman, the current iteration? I you know what? I haven't, but I recently I did read the first. Uh, I think it's issue nine or ten. It's the one where uh, Superboy and Robin, Robin yes, meet for the I first time as well. Yeah, it's mm. very cool. It's very cool. I really like um, how they've finally kind of moved forward with Superman. They're like, okay, yeah. he's got a kid, and he's kind of teaching him how to be a hero, and yeah. it's really good. Because when I was a kid, I was always re- there were all millions of Superman issues. Not millions. It's too millions. Many. Millions upon billions of Superman <laughs> issues where. Near in the future, Superman leaves Earth and Superman 2, his son, takes over. Yeah. And that's the way it was stuck for 25 years. Yeah, man. And there was never any evolution. And now we've got one, which is good. Yeah. How long do you think they until they erase him? I don't know. It's going pretty well. I don't think yeah. they will. Not okay, for good. a while. I mean, they will eventually. I think because New 52 was kind of like, this isn't your granddad's super, Superman. He's kind of a prick and he doesn't wear his jocks on the outside or whatever. He still doesn't wear his jocks, but they've taken it back to... To that kind of core values, and I mm-hmm. know oh, I really like I really like what they're doing with it because I wasn't impressed with any of the new Fifty Two Superman stuff. So he wears it's not terrible, right? But it's just like so he wears mm. he wears the costume that doesn't have the underpants on the outside, yeah. But he's the he's the old Superman. Yes. Did he take the new Superman costume from the corpse of the new Superman? No, I don't think he took it off him, but I'm sure it's got. But he was like, hmm, <laughs> this corpse inspires me to update my costume a little bit. Mm, it's sad and all, but mm, but yeah, love wearing a suit. So slick. Because I don't have to wear a suit. <laughs> mm, I could just wear that weird jeans and t-shirt combo. Absolutely. It looked bad. Actually, that, I didn't mind that uh, that run of Superman where he's depowered and he's in the streets and he's got the 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 cape on his fist and he's like, yeah. he can hit people. I didn't hate it. I was okay. But I did, did but not. But I didn't finish it. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Yeah. I, I didn't hate it, but I also didn't like the fact that it was running at the same time as like the Justice League yes. where he's the full Superman. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, why, why just just finish this plot line. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Or you or do modern day Superman mm. and then cut back to him being like, oh, I can't uh, imagine. Remember back in the day when I was just didn't have the powers and I just... Ran around in jeans and t-shirt. Wasn't that fun? It was a fun time. I was the bloody Bruce Springsteen of being <laughs> better hero, mate. Better hero, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. good stuff. Uh, the Valerian a city. It's got a lot of cities. How yep. many cities are in that city? Valerian. That bloody. It's a. It's a root, and you. you it is true. It you, is too. Yeah. Aiding. You going to sleep. Yeah. That's what it is. Just gnaw on that, mate. Speaking of things that'll make your bloody go to sleep, this movie night no, actually looks really good. <laughs> yeah, you you watched it just now. Just uh, now, and you seem great. very impressed by it. Yeah. Uh, so this is a Luc Besson film. Uh, we we know that because it said in the trailer from the visionary director that brought you the Fifth Element, and we're yeah. like, Whoa, and then it's like, and Lucy. <laughs> oh, that film that literally no one watched. I saw it at a drive-in. <laughs> yeah. Kind of boring. Well, you also hated it, I believe. Because she could unlock all of her brain, yeah. and it was Morgan Freeman talking about what would happen as her brain unlocked. And that's then, right, yeah. And then, as we all, as as we all know, humans only use ten percent of their brains. Not true, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> and you're supposed to be a scientist or something. Apparently, mm, yeah. No good. But and that's that she turn into data at the end or something. I she turns into it. a USB stick essentially. <laughs> she turns into like a big black mound of goop, and then like a little sort of claw comes out, and it's got a USB stick on it. And it's like, here's all the information of the universe in it, in the USB what? stick. Is that true? Yes. So she doesn't, like, walk away at the end. She no. just turns, turns into a pile of nanobots or something. Correct. Well, that sounds shitter than I thought it was. I should give it another go. <laughs> nah. I'm not going to, but watch I should. Fifth, Fifth Element again if you're going to watch something. Yeah. I loved Fifth, Fifth Element. Gary Oldman's got that weird hair. Yeah, man. He's got that gun that can shoot around corners. Chris Rock's... Is it not Chris Rock? Chris Tucker's Tucker. in it, mm-hmm. and people hate him. But I think that's the point. He's supposed to be like yeah. incredibly irritating. Yeah, I think he's great in that movie, and that's like one of the three movies he did in the nineties, and that he didn't do anything for like ten years, mm-hmm. except for Rush Hour movies every now and then to yeah. collect twenty million dollars. But so it, it obviously looks more Fifth Element than uh, the other movies that he's done. Yeah, but it kind of looks like Fifth Element times a hundred. Yeah, big time. Now that that's the thing though. Is it going to go like your Jupiter ascending? Or it looked at into the galaxy, you know what I mean? Which well, my initial go? thought was, as soon as I saw this, the opening just image, and there was a lot to it, I'm like, this, I haven't seen Jupiter Ascending, yeah. but 
It looks a little like that. Yeah, sure. I also haven't seen it. It looks expensive, right? Yeah. So did the CGI aliens hold up for you or were you like, these are CGI aliens? They did, but I'm also... If this goes the way I think it's going to go, it seems kind of like... It seems like a fun thrill ride kind of situation. Sure. And I'm willing to forgive some okay CGI if it's... Yeah. Because do you remember all the... There was all puppet men in the uh, in Fifth Element. I was going to say right, the yeah. first one. They're not related. But uh, yeah, Maybe so... they are though. Maybe they are. Maybe we'll see a little flying taxi cab in the background of something. I'm just looking at the the budget of this. Yes. I, want, I really want, I bet it's about 130. Uh, 100. No, sorry, 180 million. That's a that's a big risk. Now <laughs> <laughs> uh, you also said that the premise is of the comic is weird. Well, I because uh, I don't know it. Well, I don't know it either. But uh, it just says. Uh, uh, hang and on. it is French as well. Yeah. See, well, that that explains a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, okay, Valerian, Dane DeHaan, and Laura Lyon, Cara Delevingne are special operatives for the government, blah, blah, blah. Valerian has more in mind than a professional relationship with his partner, blatantly chasing after her with propositions of romance, blah, blah, blah. So he's Pepe Le Pew. Oh, it's, it's, he's Pepe Le Pew, exactly. Uh, uh, drive Laura Lyon to continuously rebuff him. Nice. It's a bit weird. You know yeah. what? Just let it go, mate. <laughs> Move on. It's it's workplace harassment. Just, just leave it, all right? No, nah, okay. just chip away at him. Yeah, just chip away, wear him down, mate. I know people like that. Ugh. You know? Are they in prison? No, they're married <laughs> to that person. Oh, then it works. <laughs> yeah, it does. Keep at it. Oh, That's my motto. No, don't, though. No, don't. You know him as well. Say who it is. We'll, we'll, right. we'll take it out later. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was that a chip away situation? Yeah, it was, yeah. Wow, all right. Yeah. All right. What do we got here? Anyway, it looks great. It does look great. I mean, great. it might be nothing, but... I'm willing to give it I love it an idea like yeah, exactly. Like that I love I love a big swing, even if it's a miss. Yeah, and it looked at, It's on it, my money, but I don't care. That's right, exactly right. It looked kind of like saga in terms of like okay, yeah. just the sheer scale yeah, and no, uh, absolutely. so many alien worlds and all uh initially I'm like, is this set in a is it set in like a virtual world? Okay, right. Because at one point Dane DeHaan's got like the, the Hawaiian shirt on. And yeah, and they're on they're on a beach. But and clearly it's a it's a space opera kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. Looks fun though. It does. Do you remember the space opera from the fifth element? And then that woman had stones in her or something. Yes, I do remember Four that, Four yeah. big blocks. <laughs> yeah, good. Remember when Bruce Willis killed all those people? Yeah. Well, they weren't people. They were weird frogmen or something. Yeah, I do. Remember all the elements and one of them was fire? Yep. And he lit it? <laughs> yep. Remember his cigarettes had the really long filter, but the really short... Look, I remember <laughs> many things about it, all right? Look, I'll... I'll, I'll I'm just like, going to name things I remember. Look, all the things... Look, multi-pass. Multi-pass. Most of the things I remember at, about that film... Uh, Gary Oldman's weird hair and his weird accent and the gun did a whole bunch of different cool stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, that'll do it. Uh, Mason. Yes. The X-Men universe is going strong. The movie one? Yeah. They're rebooting it again, Appa- right? <laughs> well, that's the rumor. Okay, so there's a few things to kind of unpack here. Number one is, who cares? <laughs> Number two, who would notice? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Or Every one of them is kind of a reboot. <laughs> Everyone's kind of a reboot. The current one only ever pays... Homage to the previous one, yep. really. Yeah. If you go back more than one, it, none of them make any sense. Yep. So they're all kind of a reboot. Yeah. I don't know. What, when are they what set? What Why are you got they there? set? Okay. So apparently, uh, the idea is after kind of uh, Wolf Logan, yep. it's kind of reboot everything, kind of give things a reshuffle because obviously Hugh Jackman's stepping away. Mm-hmm. A lot of contracts are up for the younger cast and whatnot. Apparently, Simon Kingberg is sorting it all out. Which is good. I like him, but uh, and Brian Singer is is out. Okay. So he's done his four. Yeah, he's done. He's done four. He did one and two and Days of Future Past and Apocalypse, uh-huh. I believe. Uh good. Probably he's, time he, again. But he had he, he gave it a red hot go. The first two were great, and for then, the time, <laughs> for the time, and then the time. That's interesting. Like mm. I, I'm sure. Like I still. Every time I've seen those two, I've liked them a lot. The first two, yeah, man. No, I do like him, yeah. And but it's been a lot of years, and I'm wondering would I would I still like him, or would it really would they feel like their time? When was the last time you saw him? Oh, couldn't tell you, mate. Mm. Couldn't tell you because it's Tuesday. No, I don't know. <laughs> <Let's> go on. <laughs> well, because the last the last two definitely felt like oh, these are of a specific time, and the, I'm wondering. If, do you mean yeah. the last two we just had? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. And yeah. like I felt like oh, the time for these has kind of passed. There's a right, feel yeah. to them. And I don't know if it's just I'm bored with this this X Men movie format that Singer's created, or yes, that's it. <laughs> no, that's what, that's what I think. Or sorry, what were you going to say for or? I don't know if I had an or. I was just <laughs> reaching. 
Or, or if, or if X Men don't work. No, or, or maybe that that superhero movie conventions have changed, right? Because yeah. of you know Marvel Studios proper, and you know now we structure movies like this, and maybe sure. these seem more primitive. Yep, yep. In okay, a way. yeah. I no, I can understand that. But also, a lot of them take took on the kind of worst ideas from modern comic book movies, especially Apocalypse, where the ends just just a big ball of jagged metal and everyone's just shooting lasers into yeah. each other on a green screen stage. Exactly. And there's a big that, blue light or whatever. That also feels like something that we were done with several years ago. Yes. Like the, we went... That being said, we've had that at least twice a year for several years. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. But, uh, but that's one thing, because I, I kind of see... CGI metals out. Yep. Weird quantum realms are in. Big time, baby. Just put a... Just film it regular and put one of those... Turny light boxes in front of the camera. Yes. Capture whatever comes up. That's all you need. Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope. That's what I'm thinking of. Turny light box. Turny light box. But one of the... I think Apocalypse and Days of Future Past are about as good as each other, except for the end of Days of Future Past is is at least kind of... Wolverine doesn't save the day. Not that he does in the other one either. But it's more kind of like there's a message and a point... And it's on set on the world stage and Mystique saves the president and, and whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like mutants are accepted or whatever. And the next one's just kind of like Magneto kills maybe 200 million people and then that's, walks yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're going to get to that though. That's, okay. that's all we, yeah, because we, we're talking comic book movies of this year today, but we'll get to that. Hold that thought. Yeah. So if James says a different number than 200 million, <laughs> you, you get at him on Twitter. You tell him he said the wrong number. Uh, so they're also confident that McAvoy and Fassbender will return for this reboot and Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence will not I return. I doubt it. I, you know what? That's, that's the thing. I really like McAvoy and Fassbender. I think they're really great in those roles, even if the movies haven't been, you know, amazing. Yeah. But I, if you're going to reboot it, maybe just get rid of them all. Uh, no, no, I, I reckon get, look, and again, I like Jennifer Lawrence in basically everything she's in, except for Apocalypse, where she was, she was phoning that in. Yeah. She did not, she did not want sure. to be there, and it's yeah, yeah. the showed, I think. I thought she was fine, and same yeah. with the previous one, she was fine. I didn't like how, you know what, we'll get to it. Okay, cool. Doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I would, I recently saw a trailer, it's, it's for a film called War on Everything. Right. And it's about two corrupt cops sort of in the 70s. Yeah. I'd love to see Fassbender and McAvoy in a film like that. Yeah, man. Just tooling around in a big Chevy. Yes. Just, just being cool dudes. That'd be fun, right? That'd be real cool. Mm-hmm. So the other the other part of it was, so if they get those, so this is all rumors rumors again, that the next movie will be like the Dark Phoenix saga, which is kind of hinted at. Yep. Just again, it's like, is it, this, is it a reboot or I don't know. <laughs> and also Deadpool will apparently just... Crack on as per usual. Because that's the thing with Deadpool. You can set it anywhere, Doesn't anytime matter. with anybody. Yeah. And he can, he's supposed to be able to jump through dimensions and time. And so, yeah, yeah exactly. He could just find, he just find a box, yeah. sends him into another dimension. Who cares? Yeah, it doesn't it matter. Makes no difference. And also part three of Deadpool, after we get Cable and Domino in part two, will be X-Force. Great. So that's what they're building towards, which I think is a great kind of trajection for that. Instead of just getting three kind of. Did you just make up a term? Trajection. Projection. Trajection. Like trajectory. <laughs> trajection. There's not a word? No. Let me check, Mason. It's like when you're on a trajectory, but you have an erection. <laughs> trajection. I know what it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, trajection. To transmit or transpose. Transport. I don't like any the of The arc of trajecting. <laughs> <sighs> you just... No. I don't like 200 this. million people, Mason. Killed. Yep. Anyway... Uh, that's all good, probably. I'm not really sure what to make of that. I don't know how much of it is real. Do you think, is Deadpool going to be an X-Force? Well, yeah, that's, I think that's the idea. Deadpool 3 is yep. the X-Force movie. Okay, great. You idiot. No, but I get it, but is he... Oh, he's that... going to be on the team, is yeah. that what you mean? Uh-huh. I presume so. He is sometimes. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah that's true. Is he, mm. is it going to be, so it's going to be a funny one. Yeah, I guess so. Assumes. Yeah, well, huh. it'll have to be one. That'd be a funny. Yeah, okay. Is X Force generally a funny? It's a. Is it a funny team? No, no, not overly. Never. Is it? Everyone's in a grey suit. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's just like X Men Black Ops, where they go kill a mutant child or something. <laughs> like, they're like, uh, we're gonna we're gonna kill this kid. Who wants to kill the kid? Cyclops? No. Jean Grey, you don't want to kill a kid. All right, Wolverine. Yeah. Are you evil? Wolverine, Cable, are you, Deadpool. Yeah. What's your moral code? Uh, you know, at this point in time. Like? All right, put on your kill the kid black suits, <laughs> and we'll go kill a mutant kid. And then we'll come back to X Men and we'll no, don't say anything. Don't tell don't Professor say, X. Don't tell Professor X. <laughs> Even though he's killed or mentally blocked a lot of kids, mm-hmm. over, yeah. it is time. Anyway, great. Mm-hmm. Do something with it. 
maybe put them in colourful costumes as well and maybe pick a time period and just stick to it. Yeah. Just now is fine. Just the modern day. Do you want uh, Do you want Negasonic Teenage Warhead back? Do you yes, want Colossus great. back? Yes. For X-Force? Put them in X-Force? No, I just want to see them back. No, okay. they can't. you can't really put them in. Oh, d- yeah, maybe. depend Because mm. if, if it's a comical X-Force, then yes. Great. Sure, why not? The other thing is maybe we should just rest the X-Men for five years. Like keep your Deadpools... Mm-hmm. And you know whatever, but and you, then you can do your X Force, but maybe just just these up. Put them on, put them on the shelf put for a little the bit. Shelf for a Let bit. them cool off. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's also been the the rumors that they're going to integrate them into the MCU and whatever, and maybe, mm-hmm. or maybe not. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel that's that's internet trajectory more than anything. <laughs> Doesn't apply, Mason. You clearly don't know anything about that word. Oh no, <laughs> you've got me. I don't. You explained it, but I didn't understand. It's trajection. Words. All right. What did I say? Trajectia. I don't know. Oh, who cares? Mason, <laughs> who cares about words? Speaking words of, are for idiots. Speaking of who cares, did yes. you watch the new Underworld Blood Wars trailer? No. Me neither. Did you watch the new Rogue One International trailer? Yes. Now, I should say, I'll, put a spo- I'll, I'll mark it underneath, this trailer spoils some stuff from the movie. If you haven't watched it, probably don't. I feel it didn't spoil that much. Really? I can tell you the things that it spoiled. Okay, well, here's the spoiler bit. Yeah. Kyber Crystals. You see she's one? Wearing, she's got a crystal, yeah. Also, we see the Death Star fire on that planet and that city specifically. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of a big deal. Maybe uh, it'll... Do no. A, it'll do a barrel roll. <laughs> the planet will do a barrel roll. There'll be a solar flare. Oh, okay, right. It'll be right. fine, you don't know. Yeah, fair enough. Maybe the, no, maybe it won't work. No, that, well, that's the thing. It's not... You, you see it fire into it. It won't be full power. Yeah. So it won't obliterate the planet, but it will take out like a big chunk of it, okay. including that city. That, Probably. Yeah, so... All right, spoiler alert. probably don't want to know that. That being yeah. said, it still looks good. Still yeah. looking forward to it. Uh-huh. Uh, we get a touch more Darth Vader. Yes. Like just a teeny little bit more. That's right. I reluctantly did a trailer breakdown, Mason. Mm-hmm. You should check it out. It's one of some of my finest work. <laughs> when you say finest, you mean reluctant and you were very tired, presumably, yes. when you made it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Though a lot of people really enjoyed it. Maybe Great. You can check it out, Mason. <laughs> I put on a poll, put out a poll on Twitter to be like, "Do you want me to do this? And if I do it, I'll half-ass it." And the results came in fifty-fifty, like exactly. Huh. So I ended up ended up doing it. <laughs> boy, did I half-ass it! Yeah. Uh, what else do we see in that trailer that's interesting? Uh, not much. It's just kind of like an, an expansion of what we previously got, except the for power. This. Power. I still don't know what accent he's doing. No, neither do I. Right? He hasn't said enough things. That Is we he know. from Space Australia? I don't know. Space Australia. Space Australia. <laughs> Uh, but there is a book out this week. It's called Rogue One Catalyst, uh-huh. which is apparently a fantastic addition to this movie. It's a prequel book. Mm-hmm. And I know you love prequels, Mason. Mm-hmm. And where, books. Yes, where it talks about the origin of uh, Genoso's father and relation to uh, to Mendo's character. Okay. Um, and, and, and all that kind of stuff. And Christian He Hull- built Mendo because Mendo's a human replica He's not a droid. robot. You're an idiot. No, nope. <laughs> I'm calling it. <laughs> But uh, Christian Harlow from the, from the Schmoes Knows and Collider Jedi Council, he's read it. He got an advanced copy and he said it's amazing. Okay. So uh, you don't have to read it, mm-hmm. but I would recommend if you like books and you like us, you like the Star Wars, Mason, <laughs> get into it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's a spicy Star Wars. You know it. Uh, okay, here, how about this? Yeah. Here's my question about this international trailer. Do we know what time... The la- Does the layman at this point know what time period this movie is? No, no, Still no, absolutely not. Because... Uh, Jyn Ursa does say, or Mon, uh, bloody Mon Mothma does say, it's called the Death Star. Yeah. So maybe at this point? Do you reckon there's people sitting there going, yeah, but yeah, we you know. already know that. Man. Yeah, I guess maybe if you think it's set in another part of the sure. Star Wars, like in a, in a different yeah. solar system or something, maybe. Do you think if you go in, they've made it so you'll catch up pretty quickly? I hope so. Yeah, because I'm sure there's some people who will sit through that whole thing and Actually, be like... Actually, no, I don't hope so. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's right. It's not, it, other people's movie-going experience is not my concern. I don't care. <laughs> just just if you can... You know what they should do? They should have a title card and it says, if you don't understand what's going on here, shut up. Because <laughs> people who do understand don't want to hear about it. Because that's all I want. I want to go in there and I don't want people going, what, what is, isn't there always... I'll be like, shut up. <laughs> was, wasn't, what, don't we already know this Death Star? Is, what, is Ray going to fight, fight the Death Star? Shut up. <laughs> shut up, please. Shut up. Shut they up. won't shut up, though. No, that's, they won't. That's I, keep talking, it goes. Yeah. I, I want this to do well, though, because I don't want to get 
Yoda and Han Solo prequels forever. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I want the the spin off movies to be kind of interesting and and this looks interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Even if it fails, like as a as a movie, yep. I still want it to do well so that they take risks on kind of ideas like this. Even though it's it's a Death Star and whatever, it's a lot of stuff that we've seen, but it's a real, it's a different kind of approach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So just just shut up. Yeah. See, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what this this trailer also seemed to tease. We see a shot of Vader, mm. and we see, and, and he's sort of turning, and then we see Jin approaching, and I think they're trying to, yeah, they're trying to make it, they're like, trying to make it look yeah. like they're going to have a showdown, but they're not. Well, if they did, he'd kill her. Yeah, Ma- I'm sure, I'm sure they'll cross paths, but yeah, if he was going for her specifically, that uh, no, yeah. I mean, he could have killed her from there. Yeah, even that's that true. distance, probably just exactly. Kill her. Yeah. You know what they, you know what, one mistake they made of this, made of this movie, they made both the the protagonist for this movie and Force Awakens brunettes should have made one of them blonde that would have like confused people less <laughs> or a fiery red or a fiery redhead mate don't mm-hmm. you think that that would have like do you think that would confuse or a people spicy less? latina <laughs> do you think that would have confused people less though uh no are people like because i know people are, people think it's the same character do they yeah huh yeah they're both british and they're both brunettes hey, is that the same character from fun? shut up <laughs> Please, please shut up. I'm trying to enjoy this. I understand the context. You don't understand. Just shut up. You should have read Rogue One Catalyst, mm-hmm. the prequel novel. Christian Harloff recommended it. <laughs> Did you not? Uh, uh. Anyway. Also, we get the we get the weapons guy. Yes. No, it's, no, it's not the weapons guy. It's the blind yeah, blind yeah. guy. He's got a Wookiee bowcaster. Yes. Give him that does. a whirl. Yeah. Where do you reckon he got that? I uh, don't know. Good, oh, it's bigger than a Wookiee bowcaster. Maybe, it? maybe it's in his stick. It folds out of his stick. Oh yeah. Okay. I don't know. I think he just grabs it. Yeah. It's bigger than a Wookiee Bowcaster, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the Wookiee Bowcaster is about yay big, a couple of feet across. But Wookiees are real big. It's they're a not, scaling yeah, issue. But the, no, but maybe he's tall, real small. But to a spoiler alert, maybe he's real tiny. <laughs> We've seen him standing next to Stormtroopers. Maybe they're tiny as well. No, because Maybe yeah. Darth Vader's built a series of various... <laughs> they're like, well, we can't defeat him with regular Stormtroopers because they... He's just running between their legs. <laughs> they can't grab him. So let's. So we've engineered very tiny clone troopers <laughs> to fight him. Fine. Bloody Mendo's a robot and there's tiny Two predictions. <laughs> One of them has to be right. <laughs> we should also mention a lot of people have said, are you going to do Star Wars prequel commentaries? Absolutely. We're going to try and get those out before the movie. Maybe we'll do one this week. Okay. And we'll maybe do one a week or one every two weeks. But we've got some other Star Wars stuff that we've mentioned in the works. That's right. Caravan yeah. of Garbage is all recorded. Mm-hmm. It's, it's currently uh, it's, it's, it's in the works, mate. How are you feeling about that? Anxious? Very anxious, mate. <laughs> Because we, we did some video game stuff earlier this week and it was... It, look, it went slightly better than the last time, but Jesus. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how the bloody... Those Let's Play guys on YouTube, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Maybe they're just throwing a lot of controllers. I'd, I'd imagine. <laughs> Maybe they just have a box of new controllers next to them <laughs> and they hurl one in frustration and they just get the next one out of the box and they're like, okay. That's it. Mm-hmm. Before we get onto the topic of this week, Mason, uh, yes. Ghost in the Shell featurette. Uh, yep. We just watched it. Um, yep. This was with uh, the creator of the Ghost in the Shell anime. Who loves it, mate? He makes, a, he makes it. a little set visit to Ghost in the Shell, the American live action version. He's yeah. like, exceeded my expectations. That, absolutely. Yeah, he said something like that. Good. Yeah. I'm glad he's happy. It does mm-hmm. look cool. I wonder whether Will Jupiter is sending everything. Uh, you said the... the uh, well, what I, there's, there's, a, there's a very brief clip. Mm. There's, a, there's a scene in the original anime where... Uh, Kusanagi's chasing a dude through like a, a weird canal slum yeah. kind of city and it's, there's water and there's a lot of beige happening. Sure. And there's, you know, there's some sort of tenement buildings or whatever and she's fighting him in the water. And the first instant of that looks incredible. looks exactly like mm. the anime. Like she kicks the dude and he flips in the air and, and what have you and he lands in the water. But then, and she's got the cloaking device on. Yeah. But then her like decloaking is a... The worst decloaking effect I've ever seen. <laughs> That's a very big call, Mason. Yeah. I'm sure they did them in sliders. I remember that show about the Invisible Man, how he had to get the better. It, no, it's, it was worse than that. <laughs> wow! Yeah, I remember he had the he had the nanite thing in his in neck his or neck, whatever. Yeah, he had to get filled up every Quicksilver. show. Quicksilver. <laughs> yeah, he, was, he had a neck full of Quicksilver. <laughs> they had to fill him up like a car. Just that, put the that bloody show petrol. was kind of funny, I think. Sure. Yeah. Probably it's probably not good though. Probably not good. Yeah. Yeah. As all things end up not, as yep. all things end up being not good. Anyway, Ghost he had in the a Shell. chubby sidekick. Did he? I think so. I don't remember. Okay, great. Yeah, 
Wasn't he a crim as well? But they're like, yeah, but yeah. the crim's got the nanites and now we're going to use him to That's right, yeah. get into the government or wear the government or whatever that show was. <laughs> yep. What was it called? It was just called The Invisible Man? I think something? so, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Mason, we've got a topic for this week. We probably should have done The Arrival, but... Just Arrival. Just Arrival, sorry. The Arrival's <laughs> a different film, I think. We should, yeah, it's the Charlie Sheed one mm-hmm. from the 90s. Uh, but we thought we'd talk best and worst comic book movies of 2016, Mason. Yeah. There's been a handful of hits and misses... Please list them throughout the episode because I can't remember any of them. <laughs> sure. I'll be honest with you. Doctor Strange came out. What bef- What was before that? I don't know. Well, we can go through chronologically what came out. Great. And at the end, after talking about each one briefly, if we, we remember them, mm-hmm. uh, then... Definitive rankings. Definitive rankings. And we have to decide or different ranking? Uh, no, we have to fight until we come up with... Oh God, all right. <laughs> now, when we say fights, the question is: it's whoever whoever ranks them first, and the other person will immediately fold. Yeah, because sure. that's how we do these. Also, when we did the Black Mirror episode, I promised some people on Twitter that we would do a definitive ranking of the episodes. Yep. I forgot to do that. So here's the definitive ranking. Yep. Uh, one. Okay. One is uh, the national anthem, the first first one of season one. Yep. Episode uh, number two, the Christmas episode. Yep. Number three, Hated in the Nation, which is the final episode of season three. Yep. Everything else, then the one where they're on bikes. <laughs> that's the definitive ranking. All the rest are in the middle somewhere. Then that's the one on bikes is the worst one. Fair enough. That's a very definitive ranking. Thank you. And I'd fight you on it, but you said it first. That's right. So uh, why would you bother? Okay. Well, the first uh, comic book movie of the year kicked things off in a pretty positive way, Mason. Deadpool in February. Uh, everybody, including us, thought it would be shit. <laughs> Did we? Uh, yeah, because Fox were doing it and they'd already fucked it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. All signs pointed to very bad. Yeah, right. but, but then the marketing started to roll out and it looked, yep. it looked pretty funny. And uh, It was, look, it was very much a, the, the marketing was very much a grab bag. Mm. Some of it was real dumb. Some of it we were like, oh, that's kind of clever. Yeah. I think it was just this shotgun approach of throw everything at the wall and hopefully the people who like... Mm. Certain kinds of brands of humour will find the ones. Gravitate. Yeah. That was going for that sweet hangover crowd, mate. And they got (laughs) them. That's right. They bloody got them. But I think what definitely helped with the marketing was that people passed that around. Yeah. Because often when you put out marketing, viral marketing for a movie, people were just like, what, 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 how it's so? Yeah, right. (laughs) What do you want me to do with this? Nothing. On a budget of $58 million, Mason. Chump change. Chumps change. Some chumps change. Uh, It made $760 million. Worldwide, it's a lot. That's too much. Mm. It's, uh, it, that it is now the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time, and probably one of the most more than Porky's. Yeah, I don't know if Porky's is R-rated. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't think I've seen. If I, no, I have. I've seen one of them. More than what's another like eighties comedy, eighties sex comedy. Uh, more than Police Academy One <laughs> before it went all PG. More than Soul Man, where that guy uh, was white and then he. Blackfaced himself to get into college? Was that R-rated? I doubt it. <laughs> Just trying to think of terrible movies from the 80s. That is a terrible movie. Mm-hmm. Yes, more than all those movies, yes. Huh. Probably even combined. Wow. Uh, now, have you seen it since February? No. Me neither. Is it one of those things that you incline to go back to? When it comes on Netflix. Sure. Before that, probably not. Probably not, fair enough. If it goes to Netflix, Mason, you never know. It could go to Stan. could go to... That dog's sneezing away, mate. Yeah. It is the season, isn't it? It's spring here. Mm-hmm. The, the flowers are blossoming. Dogs are sneezing. The magic season. The magic season. So, yeah, so it's one of those things that you won't even download. You'll just kind of like, if this is on, I'll, I'll watch it. I had a real good time with it. Yeah. I think I think I'll wait for it to be on Netflix or Stan. Sure. And then skip to some fun scenes. Right, right. And then skip to the end. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I, what I thought was interesting about this movie was, the way it was cut, because it is a very traditional origin story. That's true. And, and you can actually recut it, because they did try a version of it where it was just it was just a through Origin line. and then action scene yeah. at the end, yeah. But it basically, it's all set around a, a bridge for That's like three true. quarters of the movie. It, it will be interesting finding a way to skip to those particular scenes. Yeah. Because the, the, those scenes are fun. Yeah. Uh, any scene with Deadpool and Colossus. Very and, fun, and yeah. And Negasonic are fun. Yeah. I find the the origin dragged a bit for me. Yeah, no, because it is that. kind of you're right. It is a stock origin. Yeah, and you know it's fun. The scenes with Deadpool, no Ryan Reynolds, no T.J. Miller, no. Uh, think more of a lady. She's from Firefly. Oh, M- Monica Baccarin. Monica, Marina Baccarin. Marina Baccarin. Yeah, Baccarin. those scenes are fun. Yep. but it's also a lot of 
very you know what the the origin is very much Brian Singer X Men because yes. it's kind of sad yeah. and kind <laughs> of slow and just kind of I'm not I'm not keen on on rewatching it. Right, right, fair enough. I'm sad and I'm in a yeah I'm in a glass case. Yeah, I don't I'm I dying. don't I don't think it's a perfect I'm exploding. Move. <laughs> I don't want to see him. Fight. I don't really want to see him fight the that British guy no, in the exploding who cares, lab. Yeah. Who cares? But that's the best that British guy's ever been. I thought he was a good villain. Ajax. Okay, that's his name. New transporter. New transporter. New yeah. transporter. That's his name. Yeah, but I, I enjoyed the the last sequence. Mm-hmm. It was it's set on. It's actually set on a heli carrier, but yeah. they couldn't say heli carrier. You see Hydra Bob, but they can't call him Hydra, Hydra Bob. Bob they just right. call him Bob and whatever. The action's great. I like the way they got around the the budget. Yeah. Yeah, and the Blur Studios who. Tim Miller, who directed it, he's the head of Blow Studios, who do a lot of, uh, they do all the the CGI trailers for like the Arkham games, and, uh-huh. and they're great. So he obviously has got a he's got a good eye for action and special effects and and, and flipping about. And so now that he's not going to do the sequel, yeah, that's what we're going to remove that eye gonna, for special effects. Are we going to just get like standard X Men running at each other and yeah, kind of stuff? Also, and um. Did did everybody? I guess my question would be: Did everybody in that sort of industry cut him like a sweet deal on? On special effects, and I think I think he did it on the cheap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe for some for some payment, kind of on the back. But the end. new one has a budget of. I, I think it's going to be about the same, maybe oh, okay. maybe a little bit more. He wanted well, the the story goes that he wanted like 140, uh-huh. but Ryan Reynolds wanted to do it for about the same. Okay, yeah. See now that I now that you mentioned this this Tim Miller thing about the, mm. the effects, yeah, maybe this one's maybe this one's going to Superman for it. It's going to look <laughs> just real straight che- just straight away. Yeah, it's real cheap. No, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think if anything, we're probably going to get more of the same, and that's what I don't want in a Deadpool movie. Same, I, I, because also I don't. We've talked about this. We're not huge fans of the character. Mm-hmm. He's kind of good when he's in and out, and then he's and he's gone. He's kind of irritating a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. But he's fun. But he's fun also, and I just don't know. Look, I, I'm. I've said this multiple times. I'm not a huge fan of like the crass kind of humor and the kind of like. Your Police balls. Academy one. Yeah, I just don't think that, that. I understand people find it funny. For me, a guy being like, "Lick my balls. What are you doing?" You know what I mean? Like, I don't. <laughs> a real porky situation. <laughs> a real porky situation. Like, it's not really my thing. Mm-hmm. So, and I think Revenge of the Nerds. Revenge, was that R rating? <laughs> yeah, that's that was, what I was trying that to was think of. Probably one of them. Mm-hmm. I don't think there even was an R rating then, though. Right, okay. It was all whatever they said back then. One below X or whatever it was. NC-17. Okay, cool. I don't know. Yeah. I like the quips and mm-hmm. the humour, but what, I don't think it... The comics doesn't necessarily go all that way, and I don't think the, the movie mm. benefits from it necessarily. Yeah. Yeah. Not that I'm some prude, Mason. That's <laughs> yeah. not what I'm You've about. You've seen Police Academy 1. <laughs> I and don't think I have. Porkies. Maybe. Why can't I think of any more R-rated <laughs> comedies from the There 80s? were so many! Yeah. What's the one? Vacation. Animal ha- vacation. Vacation. Animal House. That might have been the 70s. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man, I don't know. I don't yeah. know what to tell you. Mm-hmm. Anyway, they're all shit. Like, you think <laughs> they're good, but you go back, they're not good. Yeah. Because they've, they've been done a million times since. Way worse. Yeah. It's all watered down. <laughs> going, I was going to say, going back to Deadpool, I guess one, also one of the, the things he can do in the comic books that he can't do in the movies is just sort of switch identities a lot. Like, yeah. he can be... You know, he can suddenly be Deadpool Sorcerer Supreme. Right. Or he can be he can have the Venom symbiote in a flashback yeah. for multiple issues. Is he or about he can, Thor's hammer? He probably has. He's probably had it through some Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah. If he hasn't, Marvel put it on your list. Put it on your bloody list, mate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. And he and he's all and he's always better when he's bouncing off of another superhero and that superhero is just being very much what that superhero is, so he can kind of make fun of them. Yeah, uh huh. Like I enjoy And if that he can't attach and if he but if he can't attach to the Avengers or you know, uh, Spider Man or what have you. Then. Yeah. So a lot of that is lost. Also, the only you know he can attach himself, but you know he attaches himself to Colossus, who's taking himself very seriously. Yeah, and that was so great. that's fun. Yeah. But how many more X Men can he do that with? Cable. All right. And then and then the X Force in the third. And one. exactly, but again, if they and if they're going to reboot the X Men universe, yeah, they all have different character traits. Yeah, yeah. How can he? Like it'd be fun if he teamed up with Wolverine because Wolverine's been all in all the movies. He's got the very defined character. He's yes. got the delightful Hubert Jackman. Yeah, he comes in and he does Wolverine to the extreme, and then Deadpool makes fun of him. That's fun. But also, Deadpool. Wolverine- What's he going to team up with Cyclops? Who cares? <laughs> I like Cyclops, but yeah, you're right. That's not as interesting a dynamic. But also, the Hugh Jackman Wolverine is also kind of quippy and it's like, "Well, they call you wheels guy in a wheelchair. What are you, some kind of dickhead?" <laughs> That's right. Yeah, that's wheelchair. You fucking dickhead. <laughs> well, they call you red glasses. What are you bloody wear some red glasses? Ha ha. What do they call you? What do they call you? Little Miss Telekinesis. What do you got there? Got some telekinesis. Get in my mind. Yeah. 
<laughs> now you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, it's pretty good. Well, they call you a nightcrawler because you you got blue skin and you teleport and you got a prehensile tail. They call you that. Ha <laughs> ha, nice one, idiots. <laughs> he is very, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Anyway, it's uh, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. I give it I give it a, a, a thumbs up. <laughs> That's what I give it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> thumbs up. Okay, so far it's number one on the list. Absolutely. Here we go. Something. You know that- what I also. You know what I loved about it also what? that it wasn't just. I enjoyed the various pretenses for him never having any guns. Yes. Or yeah. running, con- oh, I've got 10 bullets. That's yeah, all I have, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Limitations often breed creativity, Mason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why this show is so great. Yeah. Moving on. We barely have any bullets. <laughs> We've got one bullet and it's just been we're a We're con- saving it for episode 200. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Uh, we're, we're basically, it's a, every episode is a standoff. <laughs> we both look at the bullet and we're like, is this the day we both run for the bullets? <laughs> <laughs> Who gets to it? Uh, so Bat- uh, the next one, Batman v Superman, is kind of like the opposite of mm-hmm. the kind of the way that Deadpool was put together. A lot of money, a lot of studio support, uh-huh. uh, and it uh, it and it did not as well. Um, it was on a. It budget- did not as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. It, well, if like it made more money, but it also cost two hundred fifty million dollars. Yep. Plus probably Pl- double for marketing. marketing yeah. Which is uh, obviously that rule also applies to Deadpool, but so it was two hundred fifty million dollars. And it made 872 or something like that worldwide. I'm going to double check that number. I'm not sure if that, that seems low. Yeah, but I know it, it definitely didn't make a billion dollars. Yeah, so it cost yeah. half a billion dollars. Yeah. About, and it made 800 million. Yeah, and look, it would have, it made money. Like it did make money, but it should have made what Civil War made. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me just find out. Okay. Um, I'm going to double now, check that. I have yeah, said in the past, yeah, th- there are, there are going to be, I'm going to say two movies on this list. That we've said we're going to maybe put a moratorium on yeah. making fun of them. Yes. We're going to do it this one more time. <laughs> no, that's how much it made. Huh. That's how much it made. And then after that, we're going to leave them. Yeah. Again, on this list, we're going to like some of these movies, maybe not so much some others. Yeah. If you loved them, that's fine. You are wrong. And it's great. <laughs> it's fine. It's great. If you loved them, it's great. But it's fine and you're yeah. wrong. Yeah. But I would say the majority of these, even yep. the ones I enjoyed... Uh-huh. Like it's, I'm not gonna look back in ten years and go, oh man, what a what a classic, what a ride. Because yeah. like most movies for me are like, what a fun time, never have to see it again. Right. Like that's how I uh-huh. look at most things. Uh, what do we got? So, Batman v Superman. Uh, I it's the the <laughs> the very linchpin that started this podcast. Yes. First episode one probably or yeah, two or something something like that. They announced well, it. Yep. Or something. We were or, real or excited. Just, yeah. Now, new listeners, if you if you this is your first episode, if you want a real thrill ride. Start at the start and watch our enthusiasm for this movie wax and wane. <laughs> We're filled with hope. Yep. Uh, we hit a peak and then we run into a trough. Yeah, that's right. Big time. Mm-hmm. A lot of people say that the Batman v Superman actual episode is one of their favorites. Oh, the review. Because it's just us like kicking it. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't even hate it. And you know, and I, I came out of it more negative than you did. And then I think it's kind of shifted. Yeah, it did. Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did a commentary of it. And you just lost it by the end. By the end, it was <laughs> you were grabbing for that bullet, mate. Well, we had to do the we had to do the extended edition. Yeah. Why? <laughs> you know what? You know what uh, saves this movie for me mm-hmm. is a lot of the set pieces are really, really good. I agree. Like the the desert stuff's great. The Batman v Superman fight is is a big letdown, but it's okay. So, but no, it's real bad. Well, and it's too late in the game because nothing happens for, and it opens so strong. With the metropolis being destroyed on the back of Man of Steel. That's true, yeah. And Batman's bloody running through the city and he's driving his Jeep Cherokee. You can't <laughs> stop him, mate. Where, no. did he, where did he get the little Where did he get the lights? Where did he get the lights and sirens? You're not allowed to have those, Bruce. <laughs> I don't care if you're rich. Yeah, there's a lot of really good stuff in this He goes movie. to Lucius Fox in the R&D department and he's like, can we get some... Uh, got my Jeep Cherokee at the front. Can you, can you invent some sort of flashing... Blue and red lights. Uh, okay, Bruce. I guess, sure. I guess you're rich, so who's going to stop you? Yeah. I don't think he actually runs the lights, though, does he? I don't know. Also, I think they're yellow. I don't know. Yeah. Who cares? Well, it's like a security car. You can only <laughs> run them when they're, when they're stationary. They yes. can't run them when they're going yeah. anywhere. Uh-huh. So there's moments in this move where I'm like, oh, that's good. That's fun. And whatever. And, and Superman is portrayed better in the in the long in the longer version on the, okay, on the Blu-ray. Yeah. But even then I have a lot of problems with this Superman. I know people are saying like, oh he's he's, he's building to it. He's getting there just you know. But huh. Batman didn't build to it. He's just Batman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the Batman in this is great. Yep. Except for all the people that he murders. 
uh, there's still people that fight me on that. Like, they'll be like, you, you said, because I did a kill count. Yep. As we know, or as you know, at least, unless it's your first episode, there's a Batman kill count from this video that I made. It's on the YouTube. And it's, uh, it's all the times that he killed. People are like, that one doesn't count as a kill because there, there was only two people in the car. You said it was four or whatever. He still killed a bunch of people. Whatever way you look at it, <laughs> yep. he murdered a bunch uh-huh. of people. Yeah. It's, it's between whatever it is, 20 If you said, 40. hey, I killed... <laughs> if I said, hey, James, I, I heard you killed four people and you're like, no, it was only two. Yeah. For no reason. I'd be like, it's still probably too many. Yeah, it's, it's too, too many. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. So will this, do you think this universe can course correct Mason in Suicide Squad, which we'll get to? Aww. We'll come to that in a yeah. minute, maybe. Look, again, and, and I feel we, you know, we've been accused of being Marvel fanboys on this sure. on this show. Though and last certain... week you just kicked Doctor Strange. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did, didn't I? Uh, yeah, look, to, to, some, to some degree I probably am, but yeah. at the same time... The reason I hate Batman Superman so much is because I love Batman and Superman. Yes. And I, for, for 25 years, I've been reading, you know, Batman and Superman teaming up. They're the world's finest superhero duo. Yeah, man. And it real like, this is their, this is their debut live action and it just crushed me how yeah. bad it was. So <laughs> I wish it were better because then I could be, be yeah. Because any look, because the layman goes, "Oh, Batman versus Superman. Why wouldn't Superman just just kill Batman immediately?" Yeah, good. And question. you have to be like, "Well, as a comic book fan, yeah, I can tell you because Batman is very prepared and he blah blah blah, and That's he's got right. the technology and what have you." There's a dozen or so ways you, more that you could write it. Why yeah. don't we just watch the movie and see how that plays out? And then yeah. you have to be like, "Oh, the reason he won is because Superman's real dumb." <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Real, real, real he dumb. takes the two kryptonite gas canisters. Oh. Like, he, fair enough, he took the first one. And you said you could recut that fight, but... I feel you could recut the whole thing. We were talking film. about this the other day, but yeah. no, you said you could recut... Did we re- do it on, on air? Can't no, remember. no, we did it. We were, we were meeting with the filthy casual guys. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. By the way, great podcast. You should listen to it. We'll talk about it a bit later, maybe. Uh, yeah, you could recut the whole movie as a better film, like a phantom edit style thing. Yeah. You cut out some of the more egregious murders. Yep. And you alter that fight scene so he doesn't get... But you have to take out the, one of the best bits from that fight scene. Where it, Superman recovers from the, the kryptonite, kryptonite gas, gas yeah. and slowly as Batman is punching him yeah. and the punches get less, you know, yeah, less and effective. less effective. Yeah. yeah, I love that bit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how he can so do it. So you'd have to take that bit out and then the bit where he takes the second gas canister to the face yeah, and, so, and just have Batman just... Wallop him for like yeah, just, four minutes. Just hit him for four minutes, yeah. So look, I reckon it's doable. Okay, yeah, I'm not watching it if you do it. <laughs> well, I'm not doing it, so you're safe, I guess. <laughs> also, the car chase is great. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Even though all the murders, all the murders, all the murders yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a it's a it's a and bit of a slog. Jeremy Irons is great in it. He is, yeah. The Batcave looks great. It all yep. looks good. Kevin Smith apparently is keep is watching. Kevin Smith it. looks good. He does. He keeps watching it and watching it. Hoping he'll he, love until it. Until he loves it. Yeah. It's not yeah. gonna happen. But I, I still think there there is some stuff to like in this, but I also think that Costumes are great. Costumes are great. Jara Piss is great. That's one thing I really hate. They yeah. really miscast Lex Luthor. Yeah. And I was one of those benefit of the doubt, let's see what they do. Uh-huh. And you know what? It's wrong. It's wrong. Yep. They shouldn't have done it like that. Yeah. And you know what? He did exactly what he was supposed to do. Yep. But that is a inaccurate. Here's, here's not even accurate. It's just a shit version. Here's something that I thought of. Mm. In in that movie, uh, the uh, Scoot, Scoot McNary is a, is a man who's lost his legs. He's yeah. in a wheelchair. He has to scoot around. He has to scoot about and yeah. he goes to this congressional hearing or the senate hearing yeah and lex luther's put a bomb in his wheelchair yeah and uh superman is there as well to answer some questions from from the senate and he because he killed all these people in the desert by shooting them that's right with bullets <laughs> yeah traditional superman bullets which right? is fixed in the ultimate cut but anyway go on yeah, yeah. and so but he but it's lead it's a lead lined yes. wheelchair so bat uh, superman doesn't see the bomb yeah and explodes and it kills everybody but in that scene we, Lex Luthor's already had a, a a conversation with that senator about don't don't give it go give me a big jar of piss and <laughs> and call it Granny's pitch tea or whatever yeah. right and so she goes to the, the Senate hearing and she realizes she 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 goes in there and she looks under a desk and there's a 
big it's not even on it's just sitting on the desk it's, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a jar of like yellowy liquid and it's labeled granny's peach tea and then she's shocked and then the building explodes yeah here's the thing yeah superman well all right first of all i think we've covered this why did where did lex luther get all the piss because it's a lot of piss it's I assume been saving it up. I sh- he was either Do you think he did a pass around at the office. A whip around at the office. He was like, "Can everybody piss in this? It's for charity." <laughs> but secondly, uh, Superman didn't notice the bomb because it was in a lead lined case, which isn't actually said in the original cut. It's said in the ultimate cut, right? Yeah, but we assume that. Yeah. The larger question is, why didn't he smell the piss? <laughs> Maybe it wasn't piss. Be- look, no. It- I mean, it was piss, wasn't it? <laughs> look, he's got enhanced senses. And look, again, there's some, you know, the senator knows some some of this wisdom, like don't piss in the thing and call it granny's peach tea. Yeah. Surely Superman, he's 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 got some Kansas wisdom as well. If there's too much piss, there's something amiss. <laughs> and surely he'd be like, why is there so much piss in this? Why is there so much piss in this room? But do you think oh, he's... No, because he'd count all the people in the room. And he'd be like, even even factoring in all the piss that's in everybody's it's bladders. It's a lot of piss. Why is there... It seems more piss. Does somebody have a really big maybe he Maybe he was distracted. Oh, no, there's a bomb! <laughs> Also, there's the if he did stop that bomb, yes. there's a big jar of piss on the table <laughs> that has to be accounted for. Uh-huh. Do you reckon she'd go? Do you reckon she'd take it and be like, "This is Lex Luthor's piss. I'm fairly certain." Do you mm. want to run some tests? You know, do you reckon that's how that would go? Maybe, yeah. yeah anyway, mm-hmm. and also, I just thought of this now. I'm not really sure on his powers, Superman's powers, because Lex Luthor he can piss. He's got a lot. He's of got piss. a lot of piss. We know that, or he's got to do a pass around, but. That bomb goes off and Superman's just standing there. But we've seen also he can he can get hit and he'll kind of like it it kind of hurts him or he'll get kind of taken aback. Yep. But here he's just standing there and the whole room's on fire. I think it's like a fire bomb more than a okay. regular bomb. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Right, I'll mm-hmm. take that. Okay. Anyway, it's kind of shit. Yep. Uh, but right now it stands at number two in the best <laughs> superhero movies of 2016. <laughs> Well done, Batman Superman. <laughs> Good job. Now, that's what I call the dawn of justice. Indeed. Still, I'm looking forward to what's next. Yeah, me too. Just make put, it good. Get please. it together. Come please, on. Please, please, God. Superman is like my favorite comic book character. I just want to see a good version of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a mullet, which is the bad <laughs> version, I acknowledge. Yeah. I know that's a contradiction. What, about, what if he came back as Electric Superman? What if that was the Look, twist? Man, if it was a, if, it, if it works, anything can work. Mm hmm. Except for Jesse Eisenberg, Lex Luthor. No, yep. but anything can work. You know what I mean? And I don't care. What if he came back and is Electric Superman blue and Electric Superman red? Uh, same actor? Uh, yes. It, look, if it's possible. They won't do it. It's possible it could work. It probably wouldn't. Mm-hmm. It wasn't one like... One was more kind of angry and one was... One was more... Yeah, blue. I think so. Yeah. One was sadder. Well, they <laughs> yeah. got that part nailed, haven't they? Yep. <sighs> Next one. Civil War. Oh, yeah. Also a budget of $250 million. But Other two movies, you've just been bumped to two and three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Twist, Batman, Superman 2, Deadpool 3. <laughs> no, nah, just kidding. Civil War made uh, $1.132 million. Billion, sorry. Well, that would have not... <laughs> and this movie... What if that was the reveal, like, today? So the, one of the accounts is going through this through the, the, the tax return. He's just like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I've written B, but it was M. <laughs> I'm in a lot of trouble. <laughs> But uh, this is kind of like the culmination of universe building and establishing characters and mm-hmm. and the the cult, like the end of phase two and all or the start of three whatever phase we're in wherever it's at it yep. was the culmination of all those things uh-huh. and it's a pretty I believe pretty bloody stellar execution yeah uh-huh. which is why it comes in at number two Mason no it's why <laughs> it's number one. one isn't it a lot of people do think Deadpool is the best comic book movie that's fair and I can like, yep. completely understand that. Uh, it's it's fun, you know. I know some people who don't care for superhero movies, and like I saw Deadpool on a plane or whatever, and I'm like, that's fun. Yeah, exactly. Um, first of all, what kind of weird version of Deadpool do you watch on a plane? Yeah, what do they cut out of that? All the sex stuff. All the sex, yeah, the weird yeah. sex stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so Civil War. I I mean, it's one of those things where uh, you you wonder whether it kind of can deliver on the the quality and the promise, and even and even Winter Soldier, which mm-hmm. is a fantastic kind of pre film. Yeah, it's a fantastic war movie. And it, it did for me on, on all of those levels. Maybe it was the IMAX that we saw it in, Mason. Maybe it was just that it's a pretty well put together movie. Maybe it's because they gave me a swag bag. You won a swag bag, yes, you I son did. of a bitch. Yeah. yeah. You son of Maybe a bitch. Maybe it's dog. all the music I enjoy on my sweet Civil War themed <laughs> Bluetooth speaker. Do you still use it? Or no, I've never used it. Used it. Ah, you f- <laughs> but I uh, know how did it play, play out for you? Great. Not the speaker, the uh, movie. 
Oh, then also great. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Just it's you know it's 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 kind of longish, but I don't feel there's any wasted time yep. in it. Every every action beat sort of ex, sort of. F- furthers the story and explains a character. Like there's the the opening, the, we've got an mm. opening action sequence where uh, the the good guys are chasing some terrorists through a through a city, and yep. every every action beat is like, okay, we get what this character is about, we get what their skills are, we get the, what their powers are. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's and by the end of that, you're like, okay, I I get all these people, do I get th- them. Do you think you need to have seen the other movies to enjoy Civil War? Or no, you, I don't yeah, think you so. Can just go into it. Yeah, I mean, obviously it helps. Uh-huh. But yeah, I I think well this didn't make as much money as the Avengers. And mm. I maybe not even Age of Ultron. I might be wrong about that. But I think the Avengers is more accessible as a as a movie. Okay. Like as if you haven't if you haven't seen the other ones. But yeah, I think this one definitely helps if you've if you've had a had a bit of background. Did you enjoy the giant text? The giant fonts for new locations? <laughs> Absolutely I did. Yeah. Berlin. New York! Brooklyn! <laughs> Brooklyn? Yes. Yeah, Brooklyn, yeah. What else is that? The villain. That's people say is one of the weaker points. I disagree. He's not a comic book villain, so from that aspect, yeah, I can understand yeah. that because he doesn't have the the purple mask. He doesn't have his purple balaclava on. Yes, his weird golden earmuffs and his little tiara. Yeah, but I thought he was because he, he he was also a villain that knew he couldn't beat up the Avengers, so he just yeah. had them beat up each other. Yes, exactly. So that's why that that worked yeah. for me. Yeah, and it and, and I think we we also had reached the point in these movies where just another fight. Between the Avengers and a bunch of CGI whatevers yeah. would have been, or just you know a bunch of evil dudes would have been real, real annoying. Yeah, exactly. There's, there's that. Re- there's the reveal in Civil War where they say, okay, there's five more super soldiers. They're more powerful than the Winter Soldier. Yep. And you're gonna have to go and fight him. And I did go, oh, all right. <laughs> Here we go. I guess this will be fine. The action's been fine. It'll probably be interesting, but I'm yeah. kind of sick of this. And then we get when we get to the secret base and they're all dead, I actually went, ah, oh, relief. Yeah, thank God. And you know what? Because we saw what they could do. Yeah. What, do we need to see any more? Do we need to see five Buckies, you know no, what I mean? exactly. Like fighting and, and, and whatever. Mm. I, I enjoyed the, the Winter Soldier aspect of this. He's, he's a really strong part of this universe that they've built up since, like, the first Avenger. Mm-hmm. Like it's pretty impressive the way that they've kind of weaved, yeah. weaved his arc in. And that metal arm is it's never looked better. <laughs> right. In my humble opinion. Uh-huh. It's not done enough stuff for me, but what can you do? It will maybe now because he's going to have what kind of technology? Yeah. Because yeah. it's like a so- '60s Soviet. That's true. <laughs> era of metal arm. They never establish the answer to that. The ring. Yeah. The yeah. Black Panther T'Challa wears a some sort of ro- the, he wears the king's you know royal seal ring. Yeah. And it seems to have some sort of weird. Magnetic. magnetic effect on yeah. Bucky's arm, but it's mm. never fully explored. Yeah, I think that's something that I think they've hinted that that will be explained. Huh. Do you think it's an adamantium ring, vibranium? Oh, no, vibranium ring? It have to be, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. This whole suit's bloody. Yeah, totally. Vibranium, vibranium. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I like. Speaking of that, I like the fact that again we've gotten to this point where. We've got these characters, you know. We've got Iron Man's got this Hulkbuster suit that can bring down a building, and yeah. T'Challa's got this, you know, his 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 Black Panther, his warrior armor is completely bulletproof, and it's not even a it's not even an issue. Yeah, he's just on the rooftop, bullets are bouncing off. We've gotten to that point, and so and they can just plow through all the bad guys. Yes. So we got to we have to find something that they can't just defeat with punching. Yeah, exactly. And it's intrigue. Yes, yeah. and each other. Tricks. Each other. And tricks yeah. and intrigue. One thing I know that you remember uh, was a bit of a sticking point was the fact that everybody thought Bucky set off that bomb, uh-huh. even though Tony Stark would have the ability to look at that footage and be like, well, he doesn't walk like Bucky. Yeah, he's exactly, not, he's, right? He's, he's not weighted with somebody who has a metal yeah. arm. And if, if Iron Man's suit can analyse Captain America's fight patterns, yeah. every punch he's ever thrown, yeah. and come up with an, you know, a new fi- you know, a fighting a technique. A series of punches of, of its own. That's yeah. right. Then surely his technology, surely his computer system on its own would go, that's not him. It's interesting that they never showed the Bucky mask. Like, was it a right. rubber mask? Was it one of those, you know, yeah. those weird mesh hologram masks? We don't know. What was yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I also, I liked how they tied it into Age of Ultron, and I liked that Tony Stark finally got his comeuppance. Yes. Because he's just been a massive prick for every movie. He's never learned a goddamn thing yep. until mm-hmm. this movie. True. And then he learned all his lessons at once. <laughs> right. And he got beat up. Yeah. So I was really yeah. happy with that. 
God damn, he deserved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, because you know at the end of Age of Ultron, he's like, I nearly killed everybody. So, everybody. Yeah. So, everybody. And everyone was like, ah, you're right. And then the next <laughs> movie was like, you know what? That's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> in, in the ne- Yeah, in the next movie, one person comes up to him and says, my son died. And he's like, well, we're going to change our ways and it's all your fault. <laughs> yeah. It's all your fault, guys. You did this. Yeah. I love how General Ross is like, you guys are all dangerous and trouble. You you made another Hulk. That's you made right, another yeah. Hulk and you set it loose. Yeah. To, yeah. What are you mm. doing? Yeah. So. Well, that's bloody management, isn't it? It certainly is. Mm. Whose side were you on, Mason? Captain America. Yes. Now, yeah. look, in the real world, I acknowledge that you would need kind of systems in place. Oh, here if we there, go. If, no, if there was like, <laughs> if there was a team like. Here, here comes another rant from Mr. <laughs> establishment. All right, here we go. No, but you need a system in place. You can't just have people going in and doing everything, doing whatever. True. But in this comic book universe where the president is probably a robot or an alien or whatever. Or trapped in the, the Iron Patriot suit. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Then you need. I can't get out, guys. <laughs> then you need. Then a team like this is necessary because everybody's mm. probably Hydra. Yeah. Or aim or something. Uh-huh, you know? yeah. So mm. that's how I stand on that, Mason. Mm-hmm. And Captain America, what a good bloke, isn't he? He's still Absolutely. a good bloke. He gave up his shield because mm-hmm. he's a good bloke. Did you see the twist coming that the parents, Tony Stark's parents, were murdered by Winter Soldier? Uh, well, isn't Even that... though it was mentioned in. It's mentioned Winter in so- Winter, Winter Soldier. Soldier. Yeah. Sort of, or it's implied. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I was not surprised. No, me neither. <laughs> He was, wasn't he? Yeah. He didn't like that yeah. at all. Do you think it was strange how he flipped out even though he knew he was mind controlled? You know how many people Tony Stark's killed? <laughs> like, so many people, right? So many parents. Yeah, probably. He killed Quicksilver's parents and that, didn't he? Because remember they were trapped oh, under yeah, a building? Oh, yeah, with, with or... Stark, Stark built munitions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really good point. Oh, we got to talk about the uh, the airport scene. Yep. Really, really good. Very good. Yeah. yeah. One of the best action sequences of all time or comic book action I would say so. Time, which Stop one? leaning in. It's weird. Okay. No, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, great. And we finally got Giant Man. And you were surprised by that, even though you knew it was coming. Because it, it, I remember when you were in the cinema, you were like, ho, 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 yeah. like, uh, just before it was happening. Yeah, real good. You were very excited. Uh, God, that, that... Everybody... and it, Yeah, and it wasn't a... Everybody, everybody had the skills. Everybody showed their skills. Everybody was evenly matched. Yep. You you go okay. I understand why everybody here is on the team. Yes, you know exactly. Here's Be- why Hawkeye and and best Black use Widow of are on Hawkeye. The team. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I liked his fight with the Vision. Yep, me too. Yeah, that was super cool. Uh-huh. Yeah, because that's how long he would last. About three seconds. Yeah, like he'd, he'd have one trick, and then the Vision would be on him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I thought that was that was super cool. Anyway, it's a great movie. If you haven't seen it. You have, so don't worry about it. Yeah, it's fine. You've yeah. seen it. Would you say, well, actually, that's one I have watched again. Me too. I have watched Civil War again, mm-hmm. yeah. There you go. And that speaks volumes, doesn't it, Mason? Mm-hmm. A thumbs up as well. For thumbs up. <laughs> We've both given the thumbs up. So that's number one? Yep. All right. But maybe it'll be toppled by whatever's next. X-Men Apocalypse. No, nah, it's not being toppled. <laughs> that's at four. I'm cool. Yep, I agree. I, it's also at four. Even though I didn't hate it, it's just flat. And it yeah. should be better. Mm-hmm. And the ending is shit. Uh, the budget of $178 million, diminishing returns, Mason, $554 million international <laughs> box office. That's two-thirds of Days of Future Pasts. Oh. Uh, yeah. Wow. All the goodwill that was built up from first class has been thoroughly wrung out at this <laughs> yeah, point. that's right. I still think Fassbender and McAvoy are great. And I think I really like the Fassbender Magneto family stuff. He got another family murdered. Yes, he did. <laughs> but, but I enjoyed I didn't even mind the young X-Men. I thought they'd be more generic than what they were, mm-hmm. but they were okay. Yep, sure. Why do I hate this then? <laughs> uh, I hated it because... I'm trying to even think. I don't hate it. I just... It's just... At least Batman v Superman is kind of a big swing. Uh-huh, yeah. You know what I mean? Big swing and a miss, but yeah. still. Yeah. Mm. It, uh, this takes no real chances. There's no... They, we only get the suits at the end yep. for like a second. We know that everything's going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> and even if the world ended, they just reboot it. So who cares? Which they are doing. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. I can't even remember why. Go back to our X-Men Apocalypse review. I think I was definitely more kind on it than you were. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Also, I thought I didn't like how Mystique's a good guy. And this is mm-hmm. why they shouldn't also bring back Jennifer Lawrence because it's done. They've yep. got every, they've rung they've got everything out of Mystique you could possibly get at this point. Yep. They've made they've taken that character further than a lot of the comic book versions have. There's a really great cosplay. I don't know if you've seen 
Uh, uh, is it the half and half one? It's the half and half one. She's one, half yeah. mistake, half a sort of a general. Looks yep. incredible. She's yep. mid transformation. Okay, real then. good. Don't know who that is, but good on him. Good on him, mate. Uh, you know what? I hated it because I. You know, one of the reasons I hated it because it was very inconsistent in terms mm. of the in when you first see Apocalypse, he can do that thing where he he pulls some yes. sand off the wall and he cuts people's heads off with yeah, it. Yeah, man. Just do that at the end. Yeah. Why aren't you doing it at the end? You could have killed everybody. Because of Dark Phoenix Saga. Ugh. Oh yeah, that's right. And we just. <laughs> Yeah, she just say she just saves the day at the end. Mm. There's no real, there's no real inkling that she can just do all the things she does at the end. You sort of have to know that she has these phoenix abilities. Well, they tell, they mention in the in the the start that everyone's afraid of her. Yeah, there's a good training sequence of Cyclops how he destroys that tree. That's oh yeah, pretty good. Mm-hmm. They do Quicksilver again. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's not as good. It's not as good no. Emerging. Well, it's because we've seen it. That's. Mm. But what do you mean the effects not as good or just the impact overall? Uh, not as good. Yeah. Also, there's another inconsistency. Uh, he moves at this incredible speed to save everybody in the fraction of a second before this bomb blows up and kills all the yeah. students. He comes out and then they hit him with a sonic cannon and he tumbles over. Yeah. He's like, what? what? That's moving at the speed of sound. Correct. He could have really easily just moved out of the way. Yes. But he didn't. Because, because he they needed, be cap- for, for plot reasons, he needed to be captured. For plot reasons, we needed to see Wolverine. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That bit was good. That was a, was a good bit when Wolverine was in it. I guess And then so. he did that weird run into the forest, yeah. remember? The yeah. camera holds on a little bit too long. Yeah. Because they wanted to make get that Hugh Jackman, you know, make the most of it. You yeah. know what I mean? What did you think of the Weapon X paraphernalia? That was fine. Yeah, that was okay for, you know. He, he wasn't naked though, which I did not enjoy. They didn't really need him. No, of course not. They but they, just, they put him in the trailer, though. Yeah. And then people go, oh, Wolverine's in this. I meant they didn't really need to have him come in and film anything. What, just not for show his face? No, they could have just filmed his face and then CGI'd it onto some sort of Olympic sprinter or something. <laughs> Don't you think that would, that's more effort than just getting him for, like, three days? Oh, I guess so. Fine. And also, but he'd have to bulk up again. Or but no, to- he's, he's constantly bulking up. Oh. He's in a constant state of bulk. Huh. Except I think he's trimmed down a bit for... Logan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, no, because that was also off the back of... What was the last one he did? Whatever the last one he did. He still had the bulk, mate. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Mm. Don't, don't you worry. He knows what he's doing. Don't right. tell you, Jackman, how to bulk or not bulk, mm. mate. I'd be interesting to Four see... Four words, people at Comic-Con. I've maintained the bulk. And everybody's like, <laughs> Woo! He could be in anything. How is he doing? <laughs> wow, he could be in any movie. He could be in a movie tomorrow. Woo! I loved it. I saw an interview with the director of... This is unrelated. Of Les Mis, mm-hmm. which is great. I really enjoy that movie. But uh, and they're like, yeah, Hugh Jackman turned up on the day, and he was—he'd clearly worked out for the role, and he was—he was ready to go to be Jean Valjean. No, it's what he just looks like. He's doing X Men movies, so he just looks right. like he just looks like that. Yeah. He's, I've I've not seen Les Mis. Is Jean Valjean traditionally very ripped? Well, he's big because he spends twenty nineteen years like doing hard labor. Uh, okay. So yeah, he is. He's, he's strong. He's, He'd be wiry more than ripped. Sure. Yeah, he's, he's probably more wiry. Yeah, he's definitely wiry. But there's a bit in it. The reason he gets. Discovered one of the reasons because he lifts a cart of a person. Oh. And Javert's like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> why can he do that? Uh-huh. And it's because he's he's got the bulk, mate. He's been he bulk- tore that cart apart with his adamantium claws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's a good movie. I uh, like Labors a lot. It's pretty right. cool. And Eddie Redmayne's in it. Your favourite. No. <laughs> we'll be talking about him next week, Mason. Because it's Fantastic Beast Week. All right. Anyway, right. we've got to move on. Uh, it's, it's, it's shit. Yeah, it's uh, no good. And also... Why the inconsistencies? Why make Psylocke look exactly like Psylocke? Why make... Psylocke's in this? Not so. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Okay. Why make Psylocke look exactly like Psylocke? Why make Nightcrawler look exactly like Nightcrawler, et cetera, et cetera? Then why make Apocalypse look like... Garbage. Garbage. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. That's the word I was searching for. Make him consistent. Make, it, make him look like the cartoon. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Make him... Give t- him the A on his belt. Yeah, man. So you know he's Apocalypse. Make him... T- Give him the weird tubes. Yeah. Make him tall. Yeah. Yeah. Make him grow real big, but for reals. Yeah, not, not in a not dream in the mind. You know what? That's that's something I hate about a Brian Singer kind of like an like a. He's reluctant to do a comic book thing. Don't yeah, don't give me it. We've we've gone far beyond. I think here's a little styler. Here's a little nod to what the fans would like, but we can't do it because that would be silly. Yeah. No, just do it. Yeah. I don't want him to grow real big in a dream sequence to show that he's, you know, too too overwhelming for Professor X to. Make him real big. Yeah. And the army shoots at him and he's like, I'm like King Kong. You know? <laughs> you can even said. say that. Ah, I'm like King Kong. Yeah. Ah, uh, good stuff. And also all these movies were building towards Professor X going bald. <laughs> right, exactly. But then it turns out in a in a 
riff from continuity. No, nah, he's not bald. He just shaves his head. Logan. Yeah, because in the new, <laughs> in Logan, he's got the yeah. the, the balding pattern. Unless we establish that maybe he's spent the last several decades attempting to regrow his hair, right? Like through through mental powers, and he's just managed to grow the crown back, and he's working his way <laughs> to, like, the to the top. All right, well, look, if they could build that into the universe, that'd be great. Yeah, I think so. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Out of the Shadows. I had a real good fun time with this one. Nah, shit, mate. What what do you like about it? Uh, I like that it was exactly like the cartoon except live action. And not as good or as good as I remember. No, it was better. Yeah, you're Uh, right. It probably was. I would have loved it. It had a turtle van. It had a... Casey Jones who just wanted to be a cop. he sucked. He was bad. (laughs) It was was a bad It's not that interesting. Uh Looked fun, Technodrome, Krang. Nah, that was all shit. Big old, big old shredder blades. It was the same, it ended the same way as the previous one. Hadn't seen it. Yeah. Wasn't burned out on it. Sure. What are our options there? What are we... Bebop and Rocksteady are good. They're great in it. The bit with the tank is good. Yep. All the turtles are fine. Yep. Uh, Splinter's a rat. Yep. They swapped out Shredder, but he doesn't do anything. He just goes into Krang's. That's right. Storage facility. Yeah, he inexplicably ends up there. Yeah. That was fun. Everybody's got a teleporter. I think it's a great kids movie, but you yeah. know what? It was a budget of 135. And aren't we all a kid at heart? Yeah, I guess so. Mm-hmm. Especially if you do a podcast. Sucked in. <laughs> uh, a budget of 135 million made 245 million. Oh, boy. Yeah, so that's it. We're not, we're not no, no more sequels? Good. That's a shame. Yeah. And I bet they're confused because they're like, but we did everything that you, we wanted. Yeah, but the last one wasn't very good. It, I thought it was okay. And this one wasn't much better and the story was shit. You can't just put all this stuff in. you got to do something with it. Like, do something interesting. Like, the first Ninja Turtles movie from 1990 or whatever, that is still the best Ninja Turtles movie. And I still argue that that movie holds up. Okay. For a lot of it. I bet it drags. Man, I love being a turtle. Yep. So we do the next one? You're going to know what a crumpet is to play cricket. <laughs> That's right. Or whatever. Elias Cotier. Six runs. Six runs, mate. Golf. No, I reckon it was good. Uh, where am I going to put it in the, I guess, Civil War? Uh, you know what? I'm going to put it above Apocalypse uh-huh. because at least it did all the comic book stuff. So what are you putting out? Four? Four, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What do we got now? I've lost my train of thought. Uh, we got Civil War. I'm going to put it at three. Okay. So you're putting it above Batman Superman. Yes. Okay. Because you know what? I wasn't expecting anything <laughs> and... It delivered. I had, it delivered. I had fun. <laughs> I had fun. BBS expecting a lot. Got nothing. Wow, that's that's really on you then, isn't it, mate? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Manage manage your expectations. Speaking that's of, what we should have called this show, manage your expectations. <laughs> Speaking of managing your expectations, Suicide Squad. Oh yeah. Uh I didn't hate it. I still don't hate it. I was gonna watch it again for this episode, because I've only seen it once. And then I said, but then we're gonna have to do a commentary on the extended version, so that means you're gonna have to watch it three <laughs> times. And you said, Good point. Actually I won't. So I understand why people hate it. I understand that it is upside down broken. Yep. I understand that it's been edited weird and the, the end scenario is just fighting a whole bunch of weird googly-eyed monsters yep. with a blue light shooting into the sky. I understand that Will Smith just Will Smiths it. He doesn't really mm-hmm. do dead shot stuff. Uh-huh. And I understand that the action sequences... Are, well, how did no you describe good. them? <laughs> I assume in the script it just said a whole bunch of googly-eyed mud monsters... <laughs> show up in the city square and there's a big fight and everybody fights. <laughs> and then they just went, we'll do it on that. We'll do specifics on the day. Yeah. And they got there on the day and David Ayer, director, just said, okay. Um, Will Smith, can you stand on a car? Stand on a car. We'll film you in a minute. <laughs> That's the best action sequence. And the bit, rest yeah. are terrible because he just went, okay, you, everybody stand there. Everybody's, the bad guys are CGI, so if you've got a gun, fire the gun. If you don't, just swing something wild. Swing a weapon or your fist wildly. Yep. We'll fix it in post. Yeah, yeah. It's so boring. <laughs> We're talking, I'm talking about Civil War, and they should all stand on their own or whatever, but Civil War, by the end of the first action sequence, you know, you know Black Widow's a great martial artist and yep. a like, kind of acrobat, yep. and she's got the skills, and Falcon can fly, and he's got the... The skills. He's got the skills. <laughs> he's got the Red Bird drone. Yeah. He's got the... He can, his wings can turn into Red a shield. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, Skull, which can do the telekinesis, Captain America... Can captain about. He can captain about. With this, I reckon a lot of people would have gotten to the end of the movie and gone, what can that guy do? We've seen him for <laughs> two hours. I don't know. What can Killer Croc do? He's got a skin condition. That's it. <laughs> Yeah. People were given weird busy work to do in this movie just so they had literally anything to do. Yeah. 
And then they all were a family. Yeah, no good. What about... Weird inconsistent motivations or no motivations. What about Batman in it? Yeah, good. Yeah, really good. <laughs> For the two minutes he's in it. Yeah, he's great. great. Uh, what about the Joker? I'm on the fence. I don't know. Same. I, yeah. I can't. You know, one of the most commented on videos, and I still get comments on this, I made a video and I titled it Worst Joker Ever, but it basically goes to and says, look, there's not enough of him in this to kind of make a definitive decision on him. Uh-huh. He doesn't have enough screen time. It's okay. Uh-huh. And a lot of people in the comments are like, it's mostly women being like, he's he's so sexy. You're an idiot or whatever. There's a lot, <laughs> there's a lot of that. I think you feel Look, in a way, <laughs> if I can point take two points from that, he is very sexy and you are an <laughs> yes, idiot. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So I don't know if those two things But also combined. I wasn't I wasn't saying he was bad. The uh-huh. point of the video is basically in summary, it's he's okay. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. and there's not enough of him and they kind of screwed him. Uh-huh. Even though it's kind of hilarious how he went he was just eating rats and sending bullets and <laughs> yep. whatever the hell he was doing yeah. for like six months and mm-hmm. and in all the interviews he's like, oh, he's, you know, I'll go and delve into it and I'm in the psychology of the Joker and we, yep. we just fucking freestyled all these scenes and it's an amazing <laughs> and he's in it for like six minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm going to put this below Batman Superman. Right. Because even, you know, we've, we've had all this controversy that oh, it was, you know, David Ayer had this dark, grim vision and it was yep. going to be this amazing drama and then it was torn apart by the studio and then they did a new version of the whatever. Sure. Fine. But you know what? Even if they got we got David Ayer's original vision, it seems kind of boring. <laughs> it seems like a boring... He it, Again, we're going back to this, this Brian Singer kind of situation where it's like, oh, well, we can't have Captain Boomerang throw any novelty boomerangs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can. That's why he's in this. That's why we're not watching a war movie. He was good though. Yeah, for was, five minutes. I mean, he, he's... Funny. Yeah, I he's like Jack on. He's yeah, fine in this. Great, but don't give me like the the whole the whole situation is the Suicide Squad go in with a team of soldiers yeah. and they just do soldier stuff. Cut out the soldiers or cut out the Suicide Squad. <laughs> you, you don't need one of them. Call it Soldier Squad. Call it a, a squad of soldiers <laughs> doing soldier things. If yeah. you're gonna give me Killer Croc, have him eat some people's faces off. Yep. You're gonna give me. Uh, katana, have a user enchanted katana to yeah, steal some people's that? souls yeah. real brutally. Yeah. If you're going to have Harley Quinn, maybe don't have Harley Quinn because what's the point of her being there? She was good though. My Robbie was But why good. is she, why yeah. is she on, the, on the squad? Because of Suicide Squad. And that, that speaks to it being kind of poorly written because if you went, okay, if you, if you had a character go, why is she in the Suicide Squad? She's just okay, an okay gymnast yeah. and she's willing to kill people. Mm. You know what? Soldiers are good at killing people. <laughs> They're willing to do it as well. But if you then went, okay, well, the reason she's in it is because we want to, we want to draw out the Joker for some reason, right? To to capture him, maybe that's the key. That would make sense why she's on there, but that's that, not really not, not it. On. So, and there's that whole Harley Quinn Joker subplot they cut out. Yeah, I don't think this out. would have worked. I don't think the the camera the real version works. I don't think the extended version works. Yeah. I don't think the Joker's wild version that we're inevitably going to get will work. I don't think David Ayer's original vision would have worked. Okay. I don't think any of it would have worked. I I would have liked to have just had this be a Mad Love movie, just Same. a Joker Harley Quinn origin. Yeah. Even though I'm kind of sick of origins, but that's something we haven't <laughs> seen properly. Uh-huh. And all this stuff, all their flashback stuff, I thought was really interesting. Mm-hmm. But hey, yep. at, the, at the end of the day, Mason, I'm going to put it above Batman Superman, even though. Batman Superman kind of it's I guess it's structured better and mm. it's got better action set pieces. Yep. But I think I I just I've only seen it once, but I I, I just yep. thought it was I I I was like I like these characters. I like the way they bounce off each other for the most part. Okay. Well, I'm going to put it below Batman Superman for the reasons that I said before. <laughs> okay. And also, but I'm going to put it above Apocalypse because at least at least it went here. We are opening the floodgates to ridiculous stuff. That, in the DC that is universe. something it did, yeah, because it brought in magic and monsters and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And apocalypse yeah. was just the same old garbage. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Wow. Who thought this was? Who thought this lineup was going to go like this? <laughs> what a twist! What a series of twists! Last one, Doctor Strange. We talked about it last week. Yep. I liked it. Oh, where am I going to put this? Well, look. You know what? Maybe we won't talk about it in depth because we just did. We sure did. Dog, stop hitting the microphone like some kind of vagabond. <laughs> Sit down, dog. No, Sit she's down. all right. You're all right. Anyway, uh, where would you? Well, let's just talk. Where would you put it then? Okay, um, let's put it. What did I do? Would you put it above Deadpool? I think I would put it above Deadpool. So you put it at two. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. And I like Deadpool, but yeah. I I thought the char- I, I like the character of Doctor Strange more than I like the character character of Deadpool. Even mm-hmm. though, well, like you said, like there's not enough magicy stuff. 
but I understand why they didn't. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you, we, we talked about it last week. We sure did. Go, Just get into it. <laughs> go back to that one. So what's the definitive order, Mason? What have you got? The definitive order is Captain America Civil War, number one. Yep. Number two, Doctor Strange. Number three, Ninja Turtles. Not Deadpool? Uh, what did I say? No, I'm putting it above Deadpool. Well, you're saying it first, so I have to All right. roll okay. on. Yep. I have to go with it. I have to go with your list. Those <laughs> are the rules. Don't at me, everybody. Uh, Deadpool. Yep. Batman, Superman. Yep. Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Okay. Well, mine is slightly different, but them's the rules. Too late. <laughs> You've got two options. You know Accept the list is given or reach for that bullet, and I don't think you will. So overall, there was seven, was there, in total? Yeah. And we got three pretty good ones. Yeah, great. I'll take it. I'll take slightly <laughs> below 50%. There's seven. What can you do? But there's also redeeming qualities in all of these. No? If you say so. You've said it. I'm going to have to go with it. I don't necessarily agree, but all right. <laughs> if you've got a list, maybe Twitter us. Yeah. Send us a Twitter. If there's an, Look, if you can compact it into 140 characters, don't give us one of those tweets... That it's the tweet, and then in order to read the end of the tweet, you have to click on that weird Twitter link at the end because there's too many characters. Don't send us. What a did pa- you do, Twitter? You ruined Twitter for me. I don't like it. It's not the point of Twitter. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. But it's time for our next segment, Mason. Oh yeah. What are we reading? What are we gonna read? I'm doing the thing. What are we reading today? Mason, I'd love to know. What you've been reading or what you are going to read. Uh, you know what I'm not going to read or listen to because I was on it. Yes. I forgot to mention, I should have mentioned it up top. I'm on this week's episode of I Love Green Guy. I did listen to that. With yeah. Steel Saunders, the uh, comedian Steel Saunders and Luke McGregor. Love Luke McGregor. Love uh, his new show. Yeah. So mm. uh, they do most of the heavy lifting in this one because they are <laughs> two professional comedians. I thought you did very well. Thank you. Yeah. I was there and I was very polite. <laughs> uh, anyway, we talked about various things. It was real you girl. read two letters the entire time. Yep, it's not really about the letters. It's not really it? about the letters anymore. Yeah. It's about good old fun times. Absolutely. Um, you know what I read this week? I read the first five issues of a series that uh, I was not aware of until recently, but it's uh, good so far. It's a Vertigo series from yeah. a few years ago called The Unwritten. Okay. And it's basically about, it's about this guy called Tom Taylor, and when he was a kid, his father created a series of boy wizard novels. Yes. About a, a boy wizard called Tommy Taylor. Yeah. That are very, very closely modeled on this kid's actual life and appearance and kind of th- and that, that sort of thing. Right. And it sort of ruined his life in a way mm. because, you know, f- huge fans of this, this, you know, multi million dollar franchise think he's that guy. Right, right. And, you know, the last book in the series had this, you know, this character maybe go into the real world. Oh, okay. Which sort of added fuel to the fire of, oh, you're this, this guy kind of thing. Uh, and he hates it, and his father mysteriously disappeared many years ago, so he has to sort of deal with this, this estate and deal with this weirdness. And all of a sudden, and and see, see, he, he sort of makes appearances on like convention circuits and stuff like that because he can't touch the, the 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 Tommy Taylor money. Right. So right. he's kind of making a living this way, and then all of a sudden, all this kind of weirdness from his father's past comes up. And it's magic it's, is real. Well, no, it's not about. It's not really the first five issues. It's not really about magic, but it's mm. about this kind of conspiracy in the world of fiction and and novels and writing. And it's kind of it's okay. a weird world, but it's not like wizards are real. It's more yeah. of like publishing. Yeah, publishing. Why? why <laughs> like why? Like is, uh, you know, it's it's sort of like do words shape the the world and do oh, the, okay. the world shape the words shape society and this kind of thing. There might also be magic in it. All Who's right, to say? Yeah. But I'm only five in it. Do words like, and or magic yeah. shape society? And What's it called? The Unwritten. The Unwritten. It's, it's on Vertigo. Okay, great. What else did I bloody read? Something else. I, I can tell know. you what I've been reading, Mason. Okay. And by playing, I mean I decided to buy Titanfall 2. You, okay, you got it. The reason I bought it was because they didn't do any season passes or extended ultimate editions where you spend 120 bucks and you right. get it. They didn't do any of that. Uh-huh. And apparently it's not selling super well. But, yep. the, but the single player campaign's amazing, so I bought it off the back of that. Uh-huh. And the single player campaign, it's short, but it's incredible. Uh-huh. I like uh, a lot of video games. A lot of time I play some, I'd be like, "Well, I've played like ten variations on this." You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I feel like I've kind of played everything. And a lot of this stuff I had seen before, but the the, the way it's paced yep. is just incredible. And the set pieces and the combat feels really good. And because you got a titan with you for a yep. lot of the time, you jump in and you just gun down a bunch of. Okay, people here's a question: it. How them guns? Amazing, yeah, really good. Are they are they just solid like shooty shooty guns? You got you got funny. You got lasers and all sorts of stuff. Missiles. You got missiles. Nice. You got heat seekers. Yes, more of the titans. Yes. Oh yeah, nice. There's also uh, one of my favorite. One of my favorite 
sections of the game, they just introduce a time ta- time travel element and then they just scrap it immediately after. So you're going through this rundown facility and there's kind of monsters in there attacking you, but then you can time jump instantly to before when the facility is being fully operational. So okay. you have this ghost just running in and out of it, just killing guys and then jumping back and forth as you go. So like a guy will see you, you'll time travel, run behind where he was, and then reappear and then, like, <laughs> and then kill him. Or huh. It's great. It's okay. really good. Right. And if you want to know more about it, Mason, I suggest you check out the podcast Filthy Casuals. We're oh, yeah. A bit of a bloody... <laughs> yeah. We're, uh, we're trying to kind of... Um, this is an official tie-in, by the way. Last, yeah. week, last week it seemed like a coincidence, but we're trying to... We're trying to kind of, I don't know, boost up some Australian podcasts and, and, and whatnot because, yeah. well, they're friends of yours, obviously, We feel a well. duty as a, a podca- an Australian podcast that is inexplicably popular. <laughs> <laughs> when we have a lot of friends who have great podcasts, yeah. they're also good and fun, but That's maybe right. don't have as many downloads as us. We're like, we should, we should they get... They still do all right, though, Yeah, Mason. I know, right? They do don't great. Don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. So I, I'd say you could... You could download last week's episode. It's a good one. Yeah. Or maybe even this new one, Mason. Yeah. That's coming. It's out Wednesday? Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of like us in the sense that they... It's it's an irreverent take on video games. Yes, yeah, exactly. We're irreverent. The Onion AV Club once called us dot, 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 irreverent, dot, dot, dot. Did they? Yeah. Good on us. Yeah, I know, right? I don't think we've ever reached any kind of... That's as high as we've kind of reached, isn't, isn't it? it? That's though, yeah. it. That's the yeah. pinnacle. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, what else? Oh, I read that issue of Superman Rebirth. I'll, it was oh, by fun. the way, I'll link that below as well, the Filthy Casuals part. Oh, yeah, nice. Check it out, mate. I'm going to. Yeah, I know. I'm probably I'm going to listen to it anyway. So. Yeah, good. <laughs> uh, what else did I read this week? The, the Superman Rebirth was good. Yep. Um, um, oh, I started reading uh, something called The Amiga Men, yeah. which is a DC comic from a couple of years ago, and it's basically sort of a... It's a sort of maxi series, right? And it's about uh, Kyle Rayner, former Green Lantern, joins the Amiga Men, who okay. are like a like a resistance force in a in a distant star system. It's you're, real good. You're a Kyle Rayner fan, yes. Well, he was my Green Lantern, I guess, growing up. So. Sure. And you enjoyed how his girlfriend was jammed in the fridge. No, I didn't enjoy that. <laughs> People stop bringing it up. God. Anyway, it's you know, it's about it's about it's about war and sacrifice. It's real, real good, real good, and the art's great. Yeah, mm, absolutely. Nice. Uh, that's about it. That's about it. Also, I'm gonna I'm gonna watch. Haven't watched it yet. Uh, our friend Raw Collings, Robert yes. Collings, has done a video about uh, the Doctor Strange's audition for the Avengers, which I haven't seen yet. But right, but you're excited to do it. He does does some great work. So he absolutely does, Mason. Pretty good. I've not watched that yet either, but I bet it's bloody good. And that's that's a very funny s- sequence that you described. Invented from last in my weeks. little head. That's right. Yeah. I hope you're ready for the next segment. Of Maybe the show, I Mason. am. Maybe I'm. I was ready. I thought you were. Spoiler. Yeah, good stuff. All right, Mason. <laughs> I got a letter here. If you want to get a letter to the show, hashtag weekly planet pod, and then we'll read out three. This is the first of the three. Okay, number one. This is from Grey Man 777. I'm going to definitively rank these three. <laughs> okay, good. Mm. Do you think we'll ever see any flippy Jedi action a la prequels in future Star Wars? Z-Z-Z-Z? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah. Because that was the, the, the prequels were flippy to the extreme. Would you was, say to their detriment? Yes. Okay, good. Oh, uh, but at the time, though, what do you reckon? Ah, uh, the second one, yes, because it was just Yoda flipping. Mm. Uh, and that but the looked... first one, it was kind of novel, and it because was, it was you, you know, hadn't seen it, and it... a lot of those were real flips. Oh, yeah, and and the, the first one, it was sort of well, this is what the Jedi could do at the height of their power. They right. weren't shuffling about in Death Star corridors, getting <laughs> getting a lightsaber, but only their robes remained. It was you know, it was the real deal. Absolutely, it was. Yeah. I don't think they can go back to that. I think no. a flip above a certain height, people will be like, Phantom Menace. Like yeah. They'll feel it in their bones <laughs> and they'll check out of the movie. So I don't think it'll ever go. Well, They'll never reach those heights metaphorically or literally. No, that is a shame. Mm. If any of them could flip, do you think it has to be like a CGI character to do it? No, that would be even worse. But Luke, Luke can flip. We've seen him flip. Yeah, uh-huh. You mean like you'd be okay with seeing like a gymnast flip? Yeah. Okay, fine, good. Yeah. Well, yeah. good, Mason. I'm- I think they might even like... They might even get, you know, the storyboards from the from Return of the Jedi and go, okay, measure this out. Right. They cannot flip above this 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 height. Yeah, sure. You, you must be this tall to ride and you cannot be above this flipper level. Yeah. Because otherwise it's going to look ridiculous. If everything's been toned down. Absolutely it has. Mm-hmm. If anybody's going to do a flip, yeah. and it won't even be, it wouldn't be a flip, 
But if anybody's going to do one of these over the top kind of looming leap, it'd be like a like a Kylo Ren. Right. Okay. Because the bad guys are allowed to. I feel the bad guys are allowed to sort of. They can cheat a little bit. They can cheat a little. Well, they've bit. got cheaty lightsabers as well, don't they? That's true. Yeah. Uh, uh, so that's number one, obviously, mm-hmm. that tweet. That's, that's the best tweet. ranked number one so far. Are there any other actors who have been demoted down the superhero ranks like Brandon, Brandon Routh? Brandon Routh, who's Kicking now... The dick, he started man. as Superman and is now... Atom. At the Atom. Yeah. I wouldn't say that's a demotion, though. Because what, what had he really done before? And he's kind of... He's got steady work and he's that's a true. pretty talented dude. Yeah. And now he's got a he's got an every week gig, mate. Yeah, that's right. And people enjoy him in the role. Yeah. I mean, what, what would he have done after Superman if he wasn't Superman? Like, you know what that's I mean? a good question. Yeah. Just be handsome in things, I suppose. Yeah, I guess. It, I, th- I think he's a great Superman, actually. I really I thought he, would, he did a good Christopher Reeve kind of... He did what that movie called for. True. Sad dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nailed it. Yeah. Uh, are there, who else has been demoted? Uh, i got some here yep. that I've written down. Adam West for a while. Demoted to basically nothing just, but Batman. Or just doing Batman Forever yep, uh-huh. or Batman parodies. He didn't do Batman Forever. No, he didn't. But there's a lot of those... Like a lot of the early superheroes, like even Chris Reeve... Didn't kind of yeah. do... Oh, this is more, this is more uh, yeah, like a typecasting issue. Yeah, or, or, or whatever. Or they, yeah, what, however you want to. Mm-hmm. Or even like like Linda Carter, so they'll get her to show up in like Sky High and be like, I'm not Wonder Woman, you know? Which yeah, Because she's true. the principal in that. Yeah, uh-huh. I like that movie though. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, I think it happens more, it used to happen more than it does kind of now. Yeah. I mean, I guess the, the issue with, say, Brandon Routh is, is TV a demotion from film? Yeah, and maybe ten years. Maybe ago, Legends yes. of Tomorrow is a demotion. I quite what I've seen. I quite like it. I think it's yeah, pretty okay. fun. Uh-huh. Man. And I, I haven't watched it in a while. I watched yeah. the first few episodes of season one. Yeah, yeah, not my bag so much. Fair enough. Uh, maybe I'll get back to it. It's a pretty sweet suit, and he's he seems like a very genial <laughs> man. I've yep. listened to him in interviews. I, I quite like him. I think he's uh-huh. cool. Uh, yeah, oh, he he was also Dylan Dog. He was Dylan Dog and Dylan Dog Dead of Fam- Night. Italy's most famous comic book <laughs> export, Dylan Dog. <laughs> Paranormal investigator fights a gargoyle at the end yep. or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's got Jimmy Olsen in it. It's they retamed them for oh, that's that. That's right. Yeah, yeah. What a weird movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it, no, he's he's been promoted actually to Dylan Dog. So. Okay, good. Uh, that was from Scott the Amazing, by the way, I believe. No, sorry, this is from Scott the Amazing. So what? what how do you rank that tweet? Uh, what was the first one again? <laughs> uh, it was on uh, Jedi Flips, and the second one was on Superhero Demotions. Oh, look, I think if I were more prepared, yeah. I feel Superhero Demotions would have been a better question, <laughs> but I wasn't prepared, so uh, it's it's one and two. They're what, in order now. What about Adam West, though? Not Adam West. What about, like, a Michael Keaton? Would you say he's had a dem- he was demoted or he didn't care because he was like, I've made so much money? Well, he turned- what about Dawson's dad? After the Flash, he oh. was never the Flash again but now until he was flashy, recently the Flash. Flash again, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, well, Keaton turned to, Keaton turned down fifty million dollars, something, something like that. Yeah, for, he, well, he made his money. He didn't yeah, that's need, right. he yeah. made it. Mm. Yeah, he he took on, he took on smaller projects like Multiplicity. That's right. Yeah, but Keaton's back in a big way, mate. Yeah, I wouldn't say, and now he's Vulture. You know, he's like, been no, he's been great in stuff. He's, he's been he's been consistently great in whatever yeah. he's kind of popped up in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, and a lot of people hate Birdman, but I thought Birdman. Was an interesting. I thought people loved Birdman. I think it's. I think opinions are divided. Well, there you go. Yeah, but I thought it was great. Yeah, I thought it was fun. I mean, because it's a movie essentially. It's a movie essentially about how hard successful artists have it. I guess <laughs> you don't. And we know that, don't we? Yeah. Better than anybody. Mm-hmm. All right. This is from uh, uh, Scott the Amazing. Uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. You once read out a tweet of mine, but it didn't generate as much witty banter as I'd hoped. Hashtag Give me another chance. Yeah. Is this it? Is this the chance? Yeah, yeah, this is it. <laughs> well, he's yeah. blown it, hasn't he? He's blown it. Like, <laughs> and I look. I don't know. Remember what the last one was, but look, maybe maybe that was on us. Maybe we dropped the ball there. But he's yeah. not given us a lot to work with. <laughs> ultimately, there. That's it, mate. Yeah, two strikes. Two strikes, and you're out. That's. <laughs> That's how baseball works in Australia, mate. Two strikes, you're out. Correct. Mm-hmm. Not even. We're giving you one more because our version of baseball cricket, you get one strike. One strike, and then you definitely yeah. Out. Yeah. So we've gone mm-hmm. above and beyond to help you out here, mate. Mm-hmm. Just give it a stuff. Uh, look, God. But thanks for writing in. Yeah. Don't do it again, though. <laughs> Don't add us, all right? No, you can. You're all right. Hey, all right. Mm. Good stuff. Okay, uh, that's the show, Mason. It is the show. Next week, Fantastic Beasts. Where are they? We'll find out. They're in the case, obviously, they're, they're as you've case. said. But we will know definitively mm. by, uh, by next week. And you'll know definitively how many times in the movie, in the cinema, I yelled, just don't open the case before they kick me out. So if, if we get to next week 
and it turns out I haven't watched the movie, it's because they kicked me out of the cinema. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Maybe you're going to be the guy in the cinema, like the Rogue One people being like, <laughs> who's that? What's this? Wasn't this? Where's Harry Potter? Wasn't this? Yeah, nice. And someone's like, hey, shut up. Hey, shut up. I know everything about <laughs> Harry Potter. Just shut I know the context. Please shut up. Please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the show for this week. Where can people find us? Uh, they can find us on Weekly Planet Pod at Facebook and Twitter and Gmail and Bandcamp, Bandcamp where hopefully we'll have some uh, new Star Wars commentaries up pretty soon Maybe one this week, if not next week, if not never. Yeah. But if uh, if if you want, there's the old, there's the original series commentaries. There, yeah, all man. Up. Yeah, get primed. Have a good old time with those. Uh, I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. I'm at Mr Sunday Movies. If you want to follow at the Weekly Planet on Twitter, that's our friend Robert Collings. Make yeah. offline videos. He's One great, of the best great, in the biz. The great man. Mm. Uh, thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our themes. Thank you to Fergal Quigley and bloody Matt Young and everybody who sends in a great fan yeah, art from man. time to time. Yeah, yeah. And you can check out those t-shirt designs as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the, yeah, yeah, on T Public. Yeah, Public. those are great. Link, that's linked below. Uh, we we'll also have an Amazon affiliate link. Yeah. Uh, if you want to click on that, it's in the episode description. If I you now have buy. something like four or five checks to cash from <laughs> them. But now the American dollar may have taken a dive. I'm not sure what's going on there, so I don't know what's So to you do. have four pieces of paper <laughs> that we can make into aeroplanes. Yeah, nice, great. Yeah. Uh, I gotta look at the market basin. Oh, and I don't really understand it, so right. this is gonna be Great. Yeah. Uh we're gonna be wearing barrels with suspenders on them. <laughs> Uh, if you'd also like to support the show, you can also go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday movies. Yeah, man. Where you can contribute a buck a month. And all those audio commentaries are free on there as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, so which is great. Not free because you paid for them. But <laughs> right? if you pay like one amount, you get them all. Yeah, we got the amount. Caravans of Garbage on yeah. your YouTube channel. Correct. More. Yeah. I got, I'm scheduling the first one for the 24th of November. Oh, yeah. So get ready for that. Nice. A trilogy, Mason. Yeah. Uh, anything else? That's pretty much everything, I think. Yeah, man. I always forget one thing, but I think. Did no. you thank the theme people? Yes, I did. Good stuff. And thank you to everybody who's listening. I'm going to lie. I do blank out when you do it. When you do it. <laughs> right? My we mind should put them on elsewhere. the whiteboard. I know. The whiteboard we don't have. We don't have a whiteboard. <laughs> we could tell you what. We'll put those checks up on the wall. Sure. And I'll put all my notes on the back because we don't need them no more. Yeah, you can just put them on the front. doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you to everybody who listens and subscribes and likes and bloody yep. send writes a review. And, oh, yep. good on you. We bloody, bloody love Bloody good on you, mates. Yeah. Send us a tweet. Oh, love them. Love them. All right. Grab that gem, you guys. Bye. Bye.